Good morning, everyone. I request all teachers, participant teachers and guests to please take their seats. Design is not just what it looks like. Design is also how it works. Design thinking, the essential ability to combine empathy, creativity, and rationality to meet students' learning needs and drive success. It is the glue that joins all disciplines. We all have gathered here to gain some idea about design thinking which has currently become an extremely popular approach to problem solving. This session is going to spark innovation and foster learner-centric approach, equi equipping each one of us to come up with creative strategies and ideas. Mm -hmm. We are extremely fortunate to be a part of this one-day workshop on design thinking and innovation organized by the Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell, CBSC, and thankful to be uh, the host of the program, Psy International School. It give, gives us immense pleasure to welcome eminent resource persons, Professor Ravi Puvaya, IDC School, IIT Mumbai, Ms. Rupa Chakravarti, Director, Education, Sun City Schools, Gurgaon, and we also have uh, Ms. Prajukta Kulkarni, founder Nodes, Shri Hari Sanduja, sir, director, Billa Public School, Qatar, Dr. Pooja Rawat, innovation officer, MOE's innovation cell, and Dr. Ajanta Sen, director, Jello Labs. We are extremely privileged to be a part of this workshop. On behalf of Sai International School, I welcome our keynote speakers. And we also welcome all the participant teachers. I'm sure we shall all be more well equipped and be more instrumental in bringing forth the change that we wish to see and facilitate creative problem solving in our areas. Without further ado, I would request our eminent resource persons to take over from here. Professor Ravi Pavaya and Ms. Rupa Chakravarti, welcome. Ma'am and sir, over to you. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, before uh, I request speakers to uh, uh, take over uh, this uh, workshop and uh, train you on uh, the aspects of design thinking and innovation curriculum, I would like to uh, give a, a brief uh, overview about uh, the initiatives taken by Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell. Can we have the presentation, please? Uh, I had put one presentation here. I'm so very happy to see uh, so many participants are there in this workshop today. And uh, I'm very thankful to Sai International School for hosting uh, this uh, workshop. Not this one. Presentation. Oh, they, had, they had saved uh, yes, this one, yeah. This one. I 
Yes. So uh, I'll make it larger. Okay. Thank you very much. So uh, design thinking and innovation curriculum uh, has, as you all know, is uh, developed by CBSC and Ministry of Education's Innov Innovation Cell uh, and IIT Mumbai. And uh, it's a pleasure for all of us that uh, the esteemed uh, renowned expert from, on design thinking and innovation is with us. Professor Ravi Pubaiya is here. He uh, actually is uh, has spearheaded this initiative and uh, uh, he's chairing the Committee on Design Thinking and Innovation. Uh, worked uh, to develop and design this course for all of you. Uh, he'll be briefing you uh, about uh, the what is design thinking, who is design thinker, why this kind of curriculum was very much required uh, for schools and the students. Uh, uh, what is a design thinking process? Uh, what, we, what will be the aim and objective of this uh, curriculum? And how schools can actually implement this uh, uh, this curriculum in their school. So all these aspects are going to be covered by uh, Professor Ravi Puvaiya, sir, uh, uh, who, who is and under his chairmanship, uh, the committee has uh, developed this curriculum. Um, I'm very thankful to him, uh, sir. Uh, Ms. Rupa Chakravarti, ma'am, is also here as a part of the committee. She has also been instrumental in developing this entire course and curriculum for the school. This uh, curriculum has been introduced right now as an elective course for students. So all of you, uh, the, the teachers and the, I think head of the schools who are joining us for this workshop today, I request all of uh, you to go back because when we received uh, interest from all of you for joining this workshop, uh, we had also received data about which of the schools are currently implementing this course. Some of the schools have already started this course from 2022 23 and some are going to introduce in next year. So uh, your role is going to be very, very important. So uh, we also have, uh, we'll have uh, Harish, uh, Mr. Harish Sanduja, sir, Director Billa Public School, Qatar. Uh, uh, I think already uh, uh, details of experts have been uh, informed. Uh, Prajakta Kulkarni, ma'am, founder notes and Dr. Ajinta Sen, Director, Jello Labs. So uh, we are going to uh, have the expert session throughout uh, today uh, and uh, different aspects of design thinking curriculum will be covered up. So before I begin, I'll take 10, 15 minutes of yours to tell you about how Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell is building innovation ecosystem in education institute, institutions all across India. So we have been working slides are not moving. Yes, yeah, slides are not moving. Slide okay, that's fine. So uh, uh, we are uh, currently uh, doing school innovation ambassador training program. Most of you might be aware of this program. School Innovation Council is another program that we are doing. Uh, very recently, we had released uh, Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell, of course, has released national policy for promoting innovations in school. Many of these initiatives we have already been doing in uh, collaboration with CBSC. Smart India Hackathon Junior Edition 2022, we conducted uh, this last month only, design thinking and innovation skill module. So these are different kind of uh, programs that Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell has been doing. As we, as you all are all know that national education policy uh, gives a huge emphasis on a new pedagogical and curricular structure. Uh, it has shifted from 10 plus two uh, academic structure to five plus three plus three plus four. And what is the expectation of uh, national education policy is, uh, uh, I, Right now, our education system in general is focused on low order thinking skills, which include remembering, understanding, and applying the information or the subjects that we taught as a teacher in schools. Now, new education policy very much focus on higher order thinking skills, which includes analyzing, evaluating, and creating abilities. Uh, we uh, the a survey was conducted by All India Council of Technical Education, um, where uh, 
student learning assessment uh, was done. In this survey, it was found that students in India performed comparable to students in, from other countries as far as the academic skill levels are concerned. But when we talk about higher order thinking skills, then students of India were far behind the other countries' students. So it was suggested by the survey that development of higher order thinking skills, which I earlier mentioned in my last slide, uh, are very, very much required uh, relative to the academic skills uh, before the school uh, student actually enter into the college. So right at the school level, we need to, we, we want students to develop those abilities, higher order thinking skills while they are in sc uh, school so that when they go to college, they can become a better, uh, uh, they, they will have all the necessary 21st century skill required uh, for nation building today. Excuse me, ma'am. Can you please uh, stop sharing and reshare it? Your slides are not moving. Is it fine now? No, now slides are not moving. Uh, it's fine now, ma'am. We need to share the presentation. Makes this yeah. It's not moving. Do we need to share it? Uh, we can present it over here only. Double Double Okay. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, a technical glitch always happens uh, in online world. So, uh, we are right now, uh, the education system right now is con concentrating on exams, marks, grades, and percentage. Uh, what the current and future needs is developing out-of-box thinking skills, problem-solving skills, creative thinking, design thinking, ideation, innovation, and entrepreneurship. Now, our new education policy uh, focuses on autonomy, practical knowledge, assessment, innovation, and critical thinking, industry 4.0 readiness, internship uh, opportunity for uh, school students. School innovation training program we launched for teachers from different schools, uh, uh, launched by our Honorable Minister of Education and Honorable Minister of Tribal Affairs. And uh, uh, so far, we have uh, more than 50,000 school uh, teach teachers currently registered in this program, uh, spread across different states and union territories. 
we have schools from emrs uh, also with us 13000 uh, teachers have completed this training program so basically in the school innovation training program we have five different modules i uh, i'm sure that many of you have already completed this training program we different training module focus on design thinking and innovation intellectual property rights uh, then uh, prototype and product development idea hand holding entrepreneurship and finance and sales aspects are also covered because finance and sales is also one of the uh, very important aspect of uh, being an uh, entrepreneur. So th those ex aspects are also covered. So these are all the five modules which I have already uh, covered. The entire portal is end-to-end -end digital. Uh, online registration can be done by schools which are still not registered. So you may go back to your school and check if the, your school is already registered in the School Innovation Ambassador Training Program. So the head of the school or any single point of contact nominated by a school can register as a spoke from the school and nominate other teachers from their school for this training program. Once this uh, training program is done, a Certificate of Innovation Ambassador is also awarded to the eligible teachers. Uh, now, we want each and every school to have innovation ambassador at their campus. And the role of innovation ambassador is basically to help creating the uh, culture of uh, innovation in their respective school. Also, to mentor other teachers and students of their schools, provide support to other schools as well. So not only the uh, in innovation and entrepreneurship ecosystem should be restricted to its own school boundary, but we also wish that each and every one of you go out in, in your vicinity and try creating that kind of uh, culture of innovation in nearby schools as well. So we have to connect more and more schools and we have to operate in hub and spark model kind of system where we not only are creating a culture of innovation within our school system, but also supporting the nearby schools as well. And this is the only way we can reach out to more than uh, uh, 10 lakhs uh, schools which are uh, there uh, in our uh, country. Now there are like multiple benefits of SIAT pro program for schools, for teachers, and also for the students. I'm not going to the slides because I want more time for this workshop. Uh, School Innovation Council is another initiative that we have been doing. This uh, program was launched first July. And uh, basically School Innovation Council program focuses on develop a 360 degree approach where uh, there is a component of awareness and training and also an innovation support. So we want uh, schools to uh, create that kind of awareness and training needed through orientation session, workshops, student skill courses, uh, programs conducted over, you know, bagless week, uh, innovation talks, and then the ideas and innovation which are coming out of school, we, uh, from Ministry of Education and Innovation Cell, we are going to support those ideas and innovations. Uh, each school need to create a school innovation council and uh, a composition is also recommended what will be the uh, members of this council uh, you may all go through this uh, the website uh, of school innovation council to know more about details of this program we already have been doing multiple initiative in higher education se sector and institution innovation council is another program which we have been doing so what we are now trying to uh, create is innovation institution innovation council network is already created in uh, thousands of uh, colleges and universities and higher education institutions all across india so now we want school system school education system to connect with this higher education system so because uh, in not in every school mentors will be available not in every school subject specific experts will be available so what we are trying to do is we are trying to connect college uh, incubation center iic's college mentors with school education system as well so that a holistic culture of innovation is built in the entire uh, region itself these are some of the multi uh, initiative that we have been doing. Smart India Hackathon, I uh, already mentioned. Junior edition, we did 
this year. So this SIH program we have been doing from 2017 onwards. So now uh, it has reached to a very, very large scale. In 2017, we started with 40,000 students in higher education institute who had participated in this uh, competition. And in 2020, the number reached to uh, 2 lakhs, more than 2 lakhs. And this year, the number has reached to much, much higher than 3 lakh students participating in this hackathon. So this year, a junior vertical is also included. And um, you might be aware, many of the students, uh, school students from different parts of the country had participated in this event. And uh, they, they were also felicitated uh, uh, for winning this competition. And we are also going to support these students by providing funding support from Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell, those who want to take their ideas further. And we also are planning to connect these students with the nearby incubation center, which are present in higher education institute all across India. Uh, National Policy for Promoting Innovation in School was launched very recently and uh, by our Honorable uh, Minister of Home Affairs and Honorable Minister of Education. And the basic uh, aim of launching uh, and releasing these guidelines for promoting innovation in schools is to um, create that uh, innovation culture in the school level. As I, I already mentioned, we need to create uh, students future ready. We need to uh, we need uh, students which are not only capable of uh, you know having a particular skill, but also they ha should have capability to solve an existing challenge and the reason for that is because uh, we don't know uh, we we never knew that 10 to 15 years back the kind of technology that we have today uh, uh, that uh, 10 to 15 years back we were not knowing about the kind of technology that we have today and after 10 to 15 years what kind of future we have what kind of technology we have not even an expert can predict what kind of future, what kind of technology we are going to have after 15, 20 years. So the, uh, the, the, so the, so the basic requirement today is we, uh, to create individual which have, who have capability to solve the problem, solve the existing challenge, challenges. Only then we can uh, progress further. So um, in this policy six foundation um, pillars are uh, given where our main focus in uh, is changing the mindset, awareness and training, uh, creating infrastructure and mentoring to nurture innovation. A lot of uh, Atal Tinkering Labs are already there in the system. And uh, what we uh, are trying to create is a connect between the Atal Tinkering Lab, which are already existing, and uh, the schools which are not having this facility, create an access of these facility to the, uh, such kind of schools. Now then incentivizing and encouraging teachers, the policy also focus on pedagogy innovation, awarding such uh, practices and uh, teachers who are involved in innovations and pedagogy and uh, collaborative partnership uh, between school and the entire community, intellectual property management and number of guidelines are also provided as far as school entrepreneurs are concerned, because if a school is a student is coming out of school, ha, creating its own startup, uh, then we uh, certainly need to have some guidelines on that. So, so the base, so here uh, we do not only want students, we we not want each and every student to become an entrepreneur, but definitely we want each and every student to have those entrepreneurial skills, which uh, which are very important for him to uh, be a successful person in the life. Uh, so with this, I would like to end. This is my last slide. Uh, we all know Global Innovation Index India has been improving uh, over the years. In 2015, we were standing at 81st position. In 2020, uh, 48th position India is having as far as GII score is concerned. So we are seeing a progressive increase in the uh, ranking of India as far as Global Innovation Index is concerned. So all these initiatives that Ministry of Education, along with, there are multiple ministries we are, which are already doing a lot of activities, a lot of program um, at different uh, scale and level. All these initiatives uh, have been very instrumental in getting us this kind of result. Uh, thank you very much. With this, I would like to end my uh, speech. Uh, you may contact me for any query in this regard. Thank you very much. Now I would request uh, Professor Puvaya uh, sir, uh, without taking much time, to please uh, uh, initiate the workshop. Thank you.
Can you see where it is, the folders? I think we've asked him to put it. That person probably knows where it is. No, I think we had sent all the slides to... to to mail. Yeah, to, no, I think what we'll do is, no, otherwise what we'll do is. WPS, can I open it with a uh, PowerPoint? Yeah, it's in PowerPoint. Yeah, it's in WPS. Just it's in WPS. Okay. Let okay. me open it. Just a minute, huh? Yeah. This. One minute, what is this one? First one. First one. First one. It's PowerPoint. Watch it. Presentation. You have to share the screen. Full screen. Do you need color mic? No, 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 this will be fine. Fine. yeah. And okay. we need that a slide changer. This is fine, fine, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. Double click, okay. <coughs> a very good morning to all of you. Yeah, thanks to Principal Sai International School for hosting us here. We are very glad to be here. Design and innovation is a very dear subject to all of us, okay. So I need to thank the Ministry of Education, CBSC, uh, Innovation Cell, and the members of our team who has put the curriculum together. So big thanks to all of them. So just to say how it all started, uh, the journey into design for me, you know, I started my schooling in, in a convent school in Kur, then Ramakrishna Mission School in Mysore, then National College in Bangalore. I have very fond memories of these school days. You know, I still in touch with many of these teachers. Then I went to IIT Madras uh, for mechanical engineering. Okay, and then uh, to IIT Bombay for product design. That was my first introduction into design. Then I went to a very well-known school in the US called Rhode Island School of Design to study communication design. Then I came back, worked for a while, and then I've been uh, at a faculty at IIT Bombay. So I've been, teaching there now for 42 years at this school. Okay, so that's how the design. So to put the whole thing in together, the school, you know, for example, uh, I, what I remember was that, that you have to remember a lot in the school. So if you could remember well, you could do well. When it went to IIT Madras, yeah, you had to remember well, but you also had to use the left side of your brain. You know, a lot of analytical skills were needed. And uh, when you went to the design school, you had to use the, you know, the right side of your brain, right? 
which had to do with you know creativity innovation and thinking and all that but in all this the big difference for me was that the design schools you learn is you know we had a closed economy then in the 90s we opened up you know that's when you started getting things you know in the market that you could actually have your choice in okay now we are almost getting to be a developed economy okay when that happens design plays a very very major role you know innovation plays a very major role i think that's why the focus is you know and uh, you know in parallel to this has been the growth of the design institutes 
you know, there were only a couple of design institutes almost till the end of 90s. Then more design institutes started coming up. Okay, now there are almost around 200 design institutes, which I think in the next five years is going to be about 1,000. So, so design as a creative option also becomes a viable option for the, for the children, you know. So that's something which has not happened, you know, especially in the context of a middle class mentality of sending our children to just engineering or medicine. You know, of course, IITs have been one of the major, you know, factors in this, right? Okay, so, so in that context, I think we are saying that, you know, design for tomorrow will be building up entrepreneurship, innovation, creativity, and it helped the whole society in general. Okay, so let me go through the presentation. It's a uh, presentation of how we actually put the whole thing together. In 2010, you know, we were very keen on introducing design and innovation in schools. So we prepared a report, sent it to the Ministry of Education, but it actually doesn't move. So, huh, it's moving, okay. Yeah, it's slowly moving. Okay, Ministry of Education uh, fortunately came out with the National Education Policy 2020, where it actually said that you need critical thinking skills. Okay, and innovation was one of the major items that you actually did uh, earmarked, you know. So, so the proposal on introducing design and innovation in school came part of that, you know. And uh, just about a year back, uh, uh, you know, committee was formed. So we've been meeting very regularly, almost every week, okay, on Friday mornings to put the curriculum together. So now it's that stage at the end of this month, we'll have the curriculum from class six to class 12 already. Okay, it will be online available. Okay, so let me just go through the whole process of it. So if you look at it here, okay, in the center is the design thinking and innovation curriculum. Okay, because it's design, it's learned through problem solving. So you do task and you learn it, you do it and learn method. Okay, and uh, the students will have exposure to design, which are through slides or video that you play. And we have kept a template. We are going to provide you with these modules, which you can build up on. No, it's fine. You can you can take it out. Watch if you want. Okay. Okay. Can you see that? Okay. So so it's learned through looking at examples in the process the students will learn some tools and you actually end up learning the process so how do we do it we need to create the content that's done through an expert here that's our team which is putting it together we are sending it for teachers feedback like all of you when you do the course you know you'll give us feedback and we'll try to improve the content itself okay and we have on the other side if you look at on the right side Okay, you have teacher training as an important. Okay, sorry for the disturbance. So on the right side, you'll see that we need to do the teacher training. So this workshop is part of that. Yeah, so for teachers, we've actually come out with a teacher's manual, okay, which project the, just after this will show you, take you through that. And we're gonna have training programs because it's gonna be non-designers who are teaching, who are gonna be teaching design and innovation. We feel that it's very simple to do it. You know, the teacher actually becomes like a facilitator you know, and works with the students to do it, we'll tell you that. So the way it is going to be is that it's going to be task books and the other books which are going to remain online. If you want, you can download them as PDF and print them, but otherwise everybody can access it online. You know, the advantage of this system is that next year we can actually improve it and change it, you know, depending on the feedback. So we've kept it as a flexible thing and uh, 
because design is a very visible output, right? You can create exhibitions. The students can have portfolios on their own. Okay, so this is a slightly different system than the you know, regular schooling which happens, right? So with that in context, so we have the design thinking process, which has a five-step process. We've also made it easy for the students and that becomes the core of the design thinking curriculum. And uh, we have all these four deliverables, okay? So you'll have introduction, FAQs. <clears throat> so I have printed out the, you know, FAQs, exposure sheets, and the task book for six, seven, eight which we are going to pass it around. So have a look at it, right? Okay, and then along with that is the teacher's manual. Okay, and that ends up as the modules for the different uh, sections. Okay, even the design thinking process itself, we made it very simple for school students. You know, we've set the first stage is observation phase. The second stage is understanding the problem space. Third stage is ideating and coming out with several problems. Then you try to build and prototype and then you reflect it. You know, so we made it very, very simple like this. Okay, and how is design learned? You have to do it and learn. There's no other way of doing it. So you have to, you know, give simple tasks to the students where they try it out and you learn it. It is going to be playful, joyful experiences for the children. Yeah, so that is a big difference. Okay, and uh, they'll all get involved in problem solving. When you say that, go try to solve the problem around your school, the children are going to be very, very involved in trying to solve that problem. Okay, and <clears throat> they'll also work together as groups and try to start it. And uh, one big difference is that somehow you have to make your classrooms into studios. Studios are spaces where people work together you know, they can muck up a little bit, you know, they do with their hands, they make paper prototypes. Yeah, so this is a, you know, change of heart, we'll have to do it in the schools, right? Okay, and it's through exposures and there is no textbook. Okay, that's a big difference because in design, the library is your world. You know, that's where you learn from, okay? Because each task is so different that you actually, you know, can't have a textbook to really do it, okay? Instead of that, we have task books where problems are defined. I'll take you through the task books also. And also, we are looking at local contextual problems to solve it so, so they get involved with that, okay? Explore, experiment, creative options. It's modules instead of hourly classes. So these are the small changes that are required in this. <clears throat> Even in the steps itself, how, you know, the the curriculum development team has done is that we've uh, figured out the lesson plans, overview vision we set up, we put in the competencies, then learning games, objectives, uh, matching it with also the uh, sustainability development goals. Then we did modules and submodules, then exposure to us and references. Then we come out with a new assessment criteria, which uh, Harish ji will take you through just after my talk. It can land up as exhibition portfolios and, you know, have validation and they can be an online documentation. Okay, and somewhere there is also the teacher's manual. Okay, so if you look at the overall context of why we are doing it, first is that it celebrates India-centric perspective, okay, and then goes outward into international. So we solve all problems and when they reach class 12, they're able to solve bigger problems, okay. Similarly, you know, start by solving your own problems to families, then community, then society, you know, then the nation, yeah, then the humanity itself, okay. We also want to focus on, uh, you know, being life-centered because, you know, if you look at the last 300 years after industrialization, the focus has been on humans at the cost of everything else around us, right? So I think we need to, you know, tell children that life is much more precious than just being concentrating on humans. So that's a change of heart we need to do. We also have to look at building sustainable societies. Yeah, so again, the last 300 years, the mankind has been very cruel to nature, right? And we have the nature, you know, reacting to us. So that's another thing underpinning 
in the in the task that we need to do it. Of course, we learn the design process, observe, analyze, explore, create, build experiences, and reflect it. And if the student gets interested in this, you know, creative field, then it can open up into, you know, pursuing a profession in that field. You know, they can opt to do design when they graduate and go to a graduate school. Okay, so this is the overall thing and it might be a little too small for people out there <clears throat> okay but i'll i'll just say that so it's it starts with class have 6 7 8 as exposure modules okay just 12 hours in the in the first years okay so you all of you can introduce this session from this year onwards okay and then you can plan on the you know 9th 10th 11th and 12th which becomes almost around 160 hours as an elective subject that you can start planning it from next year onwards. Okay, so you have time to implement this program. And another thing is that you don't have to get permission from CBS to do it. Yeah, you can, you know, plan on implementing from this year onwards itself. Okay, so, so that's something which we can do. And it follows the NEP 2020 mandates. So it's in line with that. Okay, so it's it's roughly about 18 hours, that means 12 hours in the school and six hours at home in class six, seven, eight, which is a comparatively a small module. But when it comes to 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th, it becomes 160 hours. Okay, so so it gradually increases when you go to these schools. Okay, so we've kept the overall vision, which are to explore your sensories, your cognitive abilities, your social abilities is through awareness, discovery, experience, nurture curiosity and exploration, foster creativity and innovation, identify problems and try to solve it, and apply design thinking process. And also you learn fundamentals of design. Okay, competencies are, you know, these are all 21st century skills, observation skills, communication skills, sensitivity to different things okay <clears throat> then explore creative options solve problems prototype and build and we also try to match it with the stg goals okay so roughly this is the overview of the curriculum and if we just go from class 6 to class 12 it increases in complexity you know class 6 7 8 is an exposure Class nine is you build on, you know, concerns, skills, and sensitivity. Class 10th is more about creativity and problem solving. 11th is you look at different options that are possible. And 12th is basically problem solving through projects, you know. So this is how we've done it. So it goes from simple to slightly more complex when they come to the 12th standard. Okay, so this is just a glimpse of class six, seven, eight. We can go through the details of it. Okay, it has got four modules. Okay, so the first module is very simple. You you look at uh, elements of design, okay, and you make a puppet, and you have to create a story and enact it in the classroom, okay? The teacher can do it in many ways. They can use sustainable materials to do it. It's a very simple, you know, problem solving exercise. The next one is they change one form to another, discover the forms in between. Okay, if you take multiple photographs and play it one another, the form will animate into the other form. Okay, uh, it's a very exciting, you know, principle that you can. So this is the basis for all moving images. So you do a simple exercise to understand that. It has also got to do with observation. So you try to go outside in the evening and try to take photographs of things, alphabets in nature or faces in nature. So this is the task that we've given. Okay, the third task is something from physics we've given actually redesign of a sundial okay but you have to be able to carry it with you okay it's a portable sundial one has to do okay so they have to look at sundials they are they have to look at jantar mantar or konarak how how they've used you know different things and then maybe an umbrella with a sundial or a watch with a sundial Okay, so the, it's basically sketching and trying out creative options. Okay, it's a problem from physics and you do it. Okay, next year it will change. Okay, so class seven it will change, class eight also it will change. Okay, and then the last exercise is something that they uh, go through the design process. They actually look at problems in the school environment. Okay, 
and this is class six students. They go around the school talking to different people, come out with solutions to that and make a presentation and present it. Okay, so this is roughly the class six module. Okay, and if you go up class nine, it becomes a little more complex. You have fundamentals of documentation, photography as a as a means because photography is a very very important research tool you know you you try to capture things right so so they wanted to introduce that you know like fundamentals of two dimensional design then the first part of the design thinking process that is to observe what we call as empathy you know so we have two modules on that then comes to you know sketching is not drawing sketching is ideation you know, if you have an idea in your mind, you have to put it down on a paper. It doesn't require any skills. Even the sketch is bad. If you're able to make out what it is, that's the first process. So we want to teach them. So, for example, you know, scientists like Edison, Newton, you know, all of them sketched. And if you look at the sketches, they're terrible sketches, but they actually explain the idea well. You know, so that's a very important thing, you know, for, for design. So the students should get the confidence to sketch. So that's a part of it. Then we go into three-dimensional design. And then the second part of the design process that is actually analysis or understanding of what it is, okay? When it comes to 10 standard, you go into fundamentals of moving images. Story creation is very, very important. You know, they should be able to be able to create a story, narrate a story, Okay, so there's a lot of innovation and creativity involved in that. Even a lot of presentation, if you actually put it in form of a story, it becomes a lot more interesting. Okay, so we have a module on that. And the next two modules are on creativity and problem solving. Okay, so then followed by, you know, this is again a 21st century skill. How do you communicate well? Communication skills followed by, you know, sustainability. We said that you know, take a problem from nature and try to solve it. That's the next part of it. The last one is prototyping and building a, you know, design project out of it. So this covers the ninth and 10th roughly. Again, 11th, for example, it goes to, you know, fundamentals of communication design, fundamentals of moving design, fundamentals of information design. Then you do a communication design project, then do a product design, digital design, game design, and a toy design, and come out with a design thinking product design problem, okay? So this particular part of it, the toy design, we'll do it as a task in the afternoon, okay? The same problem which is given to the 11 standard students, we'll try to solve it as groups, okay? So that's the exercise for the afternoon. We'll form teams again, and over two hours, we'll, we'll try to solve it and uh, you can make a presentation at the end of it. You'll see that it will be a very enjoyable experience. Okay, so we'll do that in the afternoon. As for when it comes to 12 standard, you know, so they, they now they know the fundamentals of problem solving, right? So they take up different areas of design. So one is, you know, objects which are personal to them, maybe jewelry or a watch or a shoes or a cloth. You know, because you can be very expressionistic when it comes to your personal product. Then a little more, which is to do with social design, which is to do with community, making things better for the community, for the neighborhood. And the third is for public. You know, it could be a world problem that you're trying to solve. Okay. So these are the things. And that is followed by a very long, you know, almost a semester long project. So they have to think of what area to solve. Uh, they can join together as small groups and do it, but it will be solved over a period of almost four months, you know. Before that, you know, we want to introduce this. For some reason, there's a lot of Indian knowledge which has come in terms of design, whether you do sculptures, whether you do rangoli patterns, <clears throat> whether you play Indian classical music, okay, which are kind of not really part of a schooling system, but it can be very nicely translated into design. So we have a module on Indian knowledge systems, which we put here. So just to make children realize that we actually have very nice systems already ingrained in our culture, which you can make use of, you know. So this is roughly <clears throat> the program. And if you look at it, you know, these are the questions that we asked. Okay. So you need to identify and 
problems in the school environment. Okay, second, you know, ninth grade, for example, waste generated in the school. <clears throat> in the 10th standard redesign of objects, artifacts in the primary. You see, these are the major projects that they do. Uh, 10th grade, they, they explore and try to find the uh, design for public concerns, design for sustainability and environmental con concerns, communication design problem in the 11th standard, product design problem in the uh, in the 11th standard next half. But what you do is that you also build an enterprise or a startup, you know, so you have to put a business model into place. And the 12th standard, I just explained, personal space, social space, and the public space, they try to do it, followed by a semester long, what we call as a capstone project. So these are the big problems that they solve at the end of each. <clears throat> and CBSC says they're going to introduce the semester system in a year. If that happens, then each semester can end up with a project, you know, so, so that becomes makes a lot of sense here. Okay, so we've also tried to change the grading system. You know, we want to be extremely encouraging to the students. Okay, so the grade that you give, even if you get the lowest of the grades, you see it as beginning, then developing, then promising, proficient, excellent, and outstanding. Okay, so this makes children feel always good, you know, motivated. So this is something we wanted to bring about in the, this one. Harish will also talk a lot more about this system. Okay, and that is converted into a rubrics. So what we've done is that for each task, we have given you a rubrics. Okay, and so that becomes like a guideline for you to give the grades, you know. So this is something which we want to introduce. There are some questions. Okay, so we don't have textbooks. We have only, you know, task books or the workbooks. Okay, and uh, we are suggesting that you combine three 40 minutes into two hour sessions because it's nice to, you know, if it is 40 minutes by the time you engage the student, the class is over. But if you can combine three of them together into a two hour session, that's great. You know, so it's a chunk of time that you get. So you need to, when you do your time scheduling, you need to think of this. Uh, third is we've kept two is to one as the work at home to work in the school ratio. Okay, so we've also defined what kind of problems one can do at school. And uh, yeah, it's based on learning objectives, learning activities, outcomes, evaluation criteria. We also said in the first five years, let not there be total dependency on uh, technology. So schools which don't have technology still can solve and uh, introduce this program. So computers are not a must, but if it is there, it's an advantage. Okay, but you can still solve all the problems without using any computing device. So that's something we've taken care of. Uh, we have to make the task interesting, exciting, inspiring. You know, it's very, very important. Yeah, so every year we'll try to modify and change it. So that's one of the things. And the assessment is based only on the task. So there is no ends exam here. Okay, so it's a year long assessment of the students. Okay, so so that's again a slight change in the way one assesses it here. Okay, <clears throat> so we have two questions, how to get disinterested interest teachers to be interested in this. Okay, so that I think you will have the correct answer to that. Third is that, I mean, second is, you know, coaching classes will come in sometime. Okay, so how do we deal with them? So one of the things we said is that every year we'll change the tasks. So they'll have to be really running to catch up with us, you know, so that may be one option to it, you know. So roughly that, you know, so you can be part of the review team, okay, which I think I'm, I'm sure all of you will give us feedback on, on how it goes. Uh, you can also contribute to the content for the next year onwards, okay, so you can suggest problems to solve. So we'll have a team to evaluate and uh, implement that. Okay, and uh, try out the tasks and projects with students and give us feedback. And also, there's a bigger task that we have at hand, you know, that is how do we convince the parents? You know, the children, you, you give them a task, you know, they'll probably love this subject. You know, there's no two questions about it. But how do we actually convince the parents? That's going to be a very tough thing. You know, our contention is that it will eventually happen very slowly. 
if there are model schools, we will start the process and I think the turning around will happen, you know. <clears throat> so this is our team, you know, from Anita Karwal, ma'am, to Abhay Jerry, you know, Projecta, Rupa, Amitre, some of them are not here. Rupa Chakravarti is here. R.P. Singh and Vishuddha Shah from CBSC, okay, and also a whole lot of, uh, you know, teachers who, and designers who helped up with the content curriculum, you know. So that's roughly the part of the uh, introducing the curriculum. <clears throat> yeah, so what I'll do is that I'll run you through uh, the first, uh, you know, set of slides which we are giving. See, what we said is that the teachers, because there's no textbook, right? People don't have a reference because the reference material is there everywhere around. It's in the internet, it's in the school library, but the teachers can put together a set of slides for each of the subjects you're doing, okay? So for example, if you want to answer this question, what is design and what are the elements of design? So there's a slideshow which is put together, okay? This is done by teachers and designers together. And this will give it to you as PowerPoint slides and you can modify it, you know. So you can download it and, you know, whatever your comfort level, you can change it. First is, you know, if you ask this question and ask the students, there'll be so many answers, right? And then you can show them, you know, is this design, you show a set of uh, four cart furniture, you know, kitchen items, a sports car, Okay, maybe SBI bank logo and start a conversation and Namul advertisement, even, you know, design of the Lota or Tabla, is there a design behind it? You know, so, so the students will start thinking that there is somebody who has actually put together thought process and it is built over a period of time, you know. And then you sh show, you know, which are the important things, you know, people are important, the environment is important, the form of the material, the function is important, creativity and innovation is part of the design, okay, and there is a methodology or a process, design thinking process with, behind it, but we can also show it, you know, for example, if you give examples of how idlis are made, there has to be a design of the vessel to suit it, if you want smaller idlis, the vessel has to be designed for that. Or for example, if you look at, for example, uh, you know, how we can make use of a space very nicely for a bed, you can put the bed under it or you can put it over it, right? So you're slowly getting, in, you know, students interested in the aspects of design. Then <clears throat> elements of design are basic units which give shape and form and convey meaning. Okay, so we have the very simple ones, the dot line, the shape, the form, texture, and color, and a bit about each one of them. For example, dot is a very simple, this thing. Random dots creates uh, no order, creates confusion. And you can also see that a bindi on the right place is nice. A bindi on the wrong place, you know, is actually not so nice. Okay, and you can see that sometimes the dots join up together like in the stars. <clears throat> Line, for example, you know, uh, moving dot gives rise to a rain, but it can be straight, band curved, or irregular, or hand drawn. And there are different kinds of lines. You know, a curved line, you know, which is soft. Uh, you know, straight lines are very active. Parallel lines become sense of order. You know, surface lines becomes transition. And when there are many lines, it can create confusion. You can also show it through example. A simple line can change the expressions on a face. Vertical lines can make it look tall, you know. People stand in a line to be orderly, you know, zigzag line can indicate adventure, you know. So these are done by teachers itself, okay. So yeah, and you can change it, you know. So again, shape, for example, you know, that you see them. And again, there are many types of shapes, you know, circle, square, rectangle, and triangle, and they become three-dimensional in shapes. So again, just introducing the very things that shapes represent objects. And there are also kinds of shapes, organic, geometric, realistic, abstract, complex and simple, dynamic and stable. So anyway, this is supposed to, you know, start a conversation, even the basics of color, which is anyway there in the physics, this one. So you have the primary colors and the secondary colors. 
And these are also mapped to the nature itself. So you have the warm colors and the cold colors. Okay, so these are all very simple introduction to then textures. All objects have surfaces and textures. And uh, yeah, they can be different types. And you can also see it in the nature, you know. <clears throat> so, so this is a typical example of how it is in terms of the references. So I have circulated the, you know, task books. So it will go one by one. But I'll just take five minutes to show it to you. Stop sharing. Silence. Maybe I'll take the, this one. So it is in double days. It's okay, right? Otherwise, you can take this a word file also. It will be in No, this is mm, PDF. Or you can take the word one, which is word. Which is, word or PDF? PDF is okay. Yeah, this is okay. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, yeah I can show it. Yeah, yeah, I can show it. Yeah, we just need to share it. No. <clears throat> so I'm just going to show you a glance of the task book. So this is how the cover page is. This is the content. As I said, in class six, seven, eight, we have four modules, you know, elements of design and storytelling, uh, form transitions and discovery of forms in the environment, sketching for ideation and product concepts, and introduction to uh, design thinking process where they solve to find problems around. We've also done a mind map of the whole course itself. So at a glance, you can see it. It also defines what kind of problems you're trying to solve. Okay, uh, we've also answered these questions. For example, what is design? Who is a designer? What is design thinking? Because I think this is a new course, right? Who is a design thinker? What is the design thinking process itself? And shown the process here. We've also said, what is innovation? What are the overall vision and aims of the design thinking and innovation curriculum? So this, we put it together. Then uh, overview of this particular class six, okay, the modules, the vision, the learning objectives, additional competencies, matching SPG goals. And then it starts with uh, the grading system, the assessment matrix, validation, references, exhibitions, and then comes out with the first module, you know, introduction to elements of design and story creation. Okay, it defines it. Then again, you know, this is the introduction to elements. We've done the introduction. We've said, what is the aim of the module? Okay, what is the place we can do it? Equipments that are necessary, the possible groupings, the exposures, for example, the one which I showed you, right? Elements of design, you show it here. Uh, next exposure is on elements of storytelling. Then the task sequence, how much time do you need to spend on them? How does it match with the design thinking and innovation process? Mapping of the SDG goals. Okay, then it comes with the task, creating imaginary puppet character using basic shapes. Okay, imaginary character or the world in your palms. That's the task at home. Okay, <clears throat> then, you know, we've asked some questions to ponder at the end of this. Uh, the students can self-assess themselves. There's an assessment for teachers, which is at the end, but the students are also able to do it. Okay, because if you look at the assessment, right, they know how to solve the problem, you know, so, so it becomes, and other references one can use. Okay, so this is a glimpse of one module. Similarly, other modules are there, you know. So the second one is on transition and shapes in the environment, discovering forms in the environment. Uh, the third module is catching for ideation, product design. Okay, so yeah, it goes on like that. 
then sketch different ideas for sundials, or design of a portable sundial, yeah, convert your final sketch into a drawing. Okay, and the fourth one is introduction to design thinking process, uh, where they actually look at a problem from their own school and they try to solve it. So, so everything is kind of set here. Okay, the faculty, you can actually modify and you know, whatever your comfort level, this becomes like a guideline for both the students and you to solve it, okay? And there is an extended, you know, uh, version of this as a teacher's manual, which has a lot more details on each of these, you know? So this is, yeah. So final design solution, they present it. Then this is the, as for module one, we have created this matrix here. It becomes easy for you to give the assessment. Okay, so when the toy design workshop in the afternoon, we'll also give you an assessment sheet so you can, you know, grade each other with that. Yeah, so roughly this. So we'll take questions at the end of the session because we've lined one after another. I'm sure you'll have a lot of queries in your mind. Okay, so after I think Rupa ma'am, uh, you know, uh, does a workshop, right? We'll have about half an hour session before lunch. So if you have any questions, please, please write it down and keep it with you. Yeah, we are there to answer everything. And any help, support that you need, you know, we'll be very glad to provide that, okay? Uh, so thanks a lot for listening. Yeah, and we'll come back to you again, okay? Okay, so the next uh, session is going to be on the teacher's manual by Projecta Kulkarni. She's going to do it online. Okay, so I think we need some help in this. Hello, Pra Prajakta, you can start now. Okay, ma'am, thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I hope you, everyone can hear me. Uh, yes, yes, okay. you are audible. Please go on. Great. Thank you. Uh, so today I'm going to talk about uh, the teacher's manual uh, and wanted to start with a little bit of introduction on why uh, we have created the teacher's manual uh, what are the what is the importance of it uh, how we have tried to outline the best practices in the teacher's manual uh, and then i will get into the structure of the teacher's manual for the design thinking innovations course uh, now the very first thing that is uh, important for teachers to know and teachers to understand is that we have tried to create a course that uh, uh, we have tried to create a course content and a teacher's manual uh, that any teacher from the background of whether they have come from background of design or not, uh, just by the understanding of uh, systematic creative problem solving, they should be able to deliver this entire planned curriculum of design thinking and innovations. So if you see that. Um, even in the eligibility criteria, we've tried to keep it open and versatile. The entire course content is very simplistic uh, in, for, in both directions for the teacher as well as for the student. Uh, and it's very important that uh, the, there, is, uh, there is this understanding of creative problem solving before 
uh, this content is delivered or in order to deliver the entire design thinking and innovations curriculum uh design as you know is not something that uh, is uh, is a separate uh, industry altogether design falls in the uh, falls into every industry out there uh, and that is why it is a lot of it's a huge task for a teacher to develop uh, the design mindset of a child so they basically should be able to uh, utilize the design process or utilize design itself in their day to day life not just for innovation or not just for learning but also uh, in their uh, also to complete their day to day tasks so there is a lot of elaborate knowledge that is uh, mentioned inside the teachers manual it's a lot of uh, information related to what each and every task is related to wh- why each and every task needs to be done what kind of skills uh, and capabilities it develops and also additional information that adds more relevance to the same task so if you see there will be a lot of elaborate knowledge a lot of information in the teachers manual uh the third thing that we think is important is that uh with the understanding of uh design with the understanding of uh teaching design teachers should be able to also learn the design uh through this course by themselves so uh we've tried to make sure that it's an experiential uh it's a atmosphere there is interactivity uh, and it also reinforces the possibility of opening our own minds towards design we look at uh things in a very specific manner and using this curriculum that we have developed for the 6 7 8 standard or even going further the 9 to 12 standard all of this curriculum should be able to open our own minds to different possibilities creativity that students show us uh, and uh, that's something that we have tried to make sure uh, is constantly uh, reinforced in the curriculum uh, one of the major objectives uh, of this course is to bring out out of the box thinking where um, we do understand that we are kind of uh, we are teaching students um, all sorts of things in our regular uh, day to day lives and we think that at this age uh, we need students to start being aware of the future uh, that it is mostly a vuca or a volatile uncertain complex and ambiguous, ambiguous world and we, they need to be equipped with the skills of problem solving decision making responsibility and collaboration uh so that we help them find uh, innovative out of the box solutions for the future so in the entire design thinking curriculum we've tried to make sure that the students are constantly connected to uh, to the environment through sustainability development goals to uh, different uh, exercises and practices that they do for out of the box thinking and uh, also try to constantly find these type of solutions and uh, that's something that the teachers manual constantly tries to promote uh, through various uh, parts of the book so to understand this uh, idea i would like to do a small 5 minute activity with uh, all of you uh, for the for out of the box thinking okay uh, so if i can see if i could see some of the participants it will be great for this part in this um, okay so for the out of the box thinking uh, i hope all of you are sitting in groups uh, at least three or four of them together uh, and i hope there's a sheet of paper uh, amongst each group so there's at least one sheet of paper in every group uh, is there uh, if uh, everybody has a piece of paper please raise your hands so that i know uh, and so that uh, we can move ahead of ahead into the next step uh does everybody have a paper and is everybody sitting in a group if you could help me point the camera towards the audience it will be great to see okay great brilliant so i see that all of you are sitting uh, with pieces of paper so we we'll go on with the next part okay so i want everybody to raise their writing hands so my writing hand is uh right hand 
so i write with my right hand so this is my writing hand so i want you to raise your writing hand all of you and uh, i want you to make a fist out of it you know like a fist you can just make a fist and now put this fist this is your box okay now we need to think outside this box so we're going to put this fist behind our backs like completely behind our backs put the fist behind your backs okay and now with the other hand i want all of you together in a group to make a paper plane okay you can just use one hand and each other to make a paper plane so i am going to put a timer of about 2 minutes if you have uh, if you want more time that's great if you can do it within that time amazing uh, and the main criteria is that the plane should fly okay so i'm starting my timer you guys can use only one hand which is not which which is the not the box hand put the box behind your backs you should not even see the box around you okay let's see how many planes we get in the air with 30 seconds up oh there is a group with a plane already oh my god show me show me see let's see if it flies Oh yeah, brilliant! Great, it does fly. Anybody else? That's one minute up. You guys are so fast. I want to see if it flies. Yes. Oh, that's very far. So good. Anyone else would like to fly? Yes, I can see. I can see a group with hands up. Yes. I hope you're not cheating with your right hands with your writing hands, because this is really cool. Everybody has a plane. Amazing. just about 10 seconds left yes does it fly oh, amazing okay we're two minutes out oh great i saw this plane really go very fast yes amazing great that is so amazing you can get your boxes out and you can release your writing hand <laughs> this is great i'm so happy that all of you have understood this activity and are truly enjoying it uh, as you can see we used out of the box thinking we obviously removed our box out we used our creativity we did problem solving we did, we used decision making we also used collaboration and we learned responsibility so these are the type of activities we are trying to include so that there are multiple skills that can be learned uh, as well as uh, students enjoy while doing it and teachers also enjoy while the students are doing this activities uh, i'm so happy that everyone <laughs> could make this amazing plans out of it it's so great to start a class with the planes itself is in it okay uh, so i'm going to go on to the next part of this which is about the best practices and methodology that we have included in the teachers manual uh, as you can see one of the most important things is that uh, in the methodology is that this remains an interactive course uh, we are trying to develop mindsets and capabilities and skills uh, and these can happen more flexibly and uh, more uh, efficiently through Uh, active participation from both teachers and students the most uh, one of the important uh, philosophies that we are using is multiple intelligences uh, so that um, and these are something that you guys already must be 
uh, knowing about or have learned before uh, have also used in your classes but we want to reinforce these ideas and that's why these philosophies we've tried to make sure that the uh, idea of multiple intelligences or bloom's taxonomy uh, and cost cycle is uh, reinforced is re uh, ensured that we've written it in the teachers manual so that you can go back to it whenever you think that you've missed out on something Uh, the philosophies of learning we have tried to put uh, from uh, gurukul uh, which also reemphasizes the importance of indian knowledge systems and how we can uh, increase the uh, increase the relevance of this subject for the students while teaching them uh, so that they are constantly utilizing this information and what they are learning into their environment or communities that they come from uh we uh and for reinforce the practices like stoicism and theory of uh, questioning uh, by seneca and socrates and then uh, also the theory of perspectives by nietzsche so these are the uh, philosophies of learning that we have included in the teaching teachers manual we've also tried to uh, add it in multiple uh, parts of the curriculum uh, in different places uh but it's just made we are just trying to make sure that uh, all the teachers are aware and have gone through these philosophies uh, before they conduct the courses so that it's there in your head it's uh, you understand what kind of interactivity and practices uh, and philosophies are expected uh, out there uh, for the students now talking about the structure um, it's very simple in that sense uh, it's uh, it goes one after the other uh, this is just an exploded view of the index uh it goes one after the other there's the overview <clears throat> then we go to the mind map of chapters tasks and exposure this is something that we have included so that there is an easy understanding you see a bird's eye view of what is to be conducted in the uh, entire course uh, duration uh then there is pedagogical strategy outcomes and competencies which we have re, uh, uh what is it rewritten related to the chapter then there is a glossary so there are some terminologies which might be different for different types of industries uh, which might be used differently in say um, design industry versus uh, used in uh, other levels of industries and that's why there's a glossary i'm sure uh, it's just to <clears throat> for teachers to understand certain terms what are used in the rest of the exposures like uh, ravi sir showed you the one of the presentations uh then there is the chapter uh what we have done is we have divided the chapter into parts like the synopsis then there is the talk about what is, what multiple intelligences we have tried to reinforce in that chapter the the chapter mind map is also very useful to see what are exactly the tasks and what exactly will be the exposures or the presentations uh, required to be shown to the students then there is a model outline or sample outline you can say and then the assessment is there uh, in the sample outline also we've divided exposures in task um, for a sample we've tried to make it uh, three hours in which there will be uh, in the there will be two exposures in the beginning and there will be tasks two tasks in the end so that uh, the students are uh when the students are active and engaged in their tasks uh they are just learning about the skills and they don't have to come back and sit in one place to for the exposures you know so uh for inside the exposures uh, since this these are presentations related to important topics and concepts to be delivered to students uh we've tried to make sure that there is a lot of information one is that uh, about the knowledge Uh, of what is to be uh, of what exactly the concept is all about uh, there are certain resources and links that we have added uh, related to updated information whatever is going on out there in the world right now uh, and we also have tried to put down links so that teachers can constantly remain updated about it uh, there are uh, outcomes and competencies right after that uh, related to the same exposure uh, the basic points to remember or tips that think in the way that teachers could add information or add uh, knowledge to students add relevance to the course for the students and then a uh, step by step uh, as well um, a step by step information about the concept initiation elucidation and closure so it's like it goes from a lot of information to even step by step information of how the entire presentation is to be delivered this is a lot of uh, information that we have put down it's so that 
uh, we don't miss out on anything that is one uh, and second is so that uh, any teacher uh, from a versatile background should be able to deliver something that is design so uh, design and innovations so that's why uh, there is a lot of uh, information mentioned on the exposure or the presentation itself uh then the task it becomes very uh, easier in that sense the tasks are more related to capabilities and skills and competencies so we've also tried to include the knowledge uh, resources and links similar to the exposures over here so that there is updated information you are able to uh, add your information on top of whatever uh, the students are doing inside the class uh, you can get them to learn more skills you can get them to learn something that is relevant to their own culture or their own environment or community uh, and then we have tried to make sure that there is still uh, an, another set of information related to the outcomes uh, competencies that they learn which is important for any tasks uh, to be performed so that you know how the step by step um, uh, process of delivering the task or activity needs to go uh, and then there is the points of remember and tips again so that uh, there is some additional uh inputs in order to how the task need to go what kind of uh what kind of work it needs to have what additional information that can be given so uh, this is just an overview um now i'll go and in, get into the teachers manual walk through so i'll just walk you through the teachers manual uh, i'm sure all of you have it uh, there is a lot of information and uh, it's something that you guys uh, should look at um in your uh, in, with due time giving it enough time let me just share my screen to that one second right so uh, this is somewhat how the teachers manual for uh, design thinking and innovation grade 6 will look we made it in a landscape view so that can be seen both on computers as well as in printed formats Uh, as you can see, I just exploded this table of contents in front of you. Uh, it starts with um, all the basic information, the historical overviews, the theories of learning, then the methodologies, and then it gets into each of the chapters of the uh, six uh, standards um, design thinking innovation course. Uh, of course, we've also included a in very important part, which is the FAQs. This is repeated uh, from the main task book or the curriculum book. Uh, but we uh, it's just so that it is reinforced and you have it in your hand whenever you need it uh, then there is a uh, the most important thing is the free preface uh, we tried to reinforce why a design thinking innovation subject is taught what it it is aimed at and how it is important to do this kind of a course right now uh, to make sure that the students in the next 10 to 15 years are able to actually utilize these skills into the uh, into development of the future uh, of course this is the team that we said spoke about the entire team with you uh, that uh, who the kind of curation the teachers have helped us with uh, then there is a basic premise and framework of the entire curriculum that we have tried to explain of what all it needs to include uh, what what is the purpose of this uh, design thinking innovations course Uh, and how the teachers manual tries to elaborate uh, the purpose into the further parts so it's uh, more uh, more or less uh, information about the framework of the entire teaching manual uh, then we've included a historical overview of how we tried to include certain philosophies from the past or certain philosophies that people have been trying to use over the generations so like the gurukul system of education where uh the philosophies of learning like applied knowledge value based holistic learning teacher student relationship uh, and how it is traditional in nature and it is uh, easier to deliver using these kind of philosophies uh like i said we've um, reinforced the ideas of uh, learning uh, philosophies of learning from both indian and western philosophers uh in indian we have included uh, shushruta uh, patanjali and vyasas and in western philosophies we we've, we've included seneca socrates and aristotle these are also certain philosophies that we have utilized while creating the design thinking innovations course and that is why uh, you will find the uh, the references in each of the each of the parts in the tasks as well as in the exposures or uh, the presentations 
so it's important that it, uh, in the in a very short uh, way you understand how these philosophies have been or, or what exactly is the point of these philosophies uh, we've also included additional the- uh, learning theories which we have tried to uh, mix and match and include in the entire design thinking innovations for it as you see we've tried to make it as scientific as possible because um this is not something that is just a concept level information for students this is something made to develop a mindset of student towards design uh, to make sure that they are uh, thinking out of the box they are creative they are uh, using problem solving skills within their house or within uh, their communities to make better decisions and to you know uh, to be able to e- uh, better address the problems that they face um objectives of the teaching manual are also simply uh, put down in uh, verbs as you can see inspire provide assess motivate uh, develop skills adopt prepare so these are also kind of uh, try to reinforce why we have a why, a why design thinking innovations course can be taught by educators how uh, and what are the main objectives of these uh, of the methodology that we have used uh, the essential methodology like i said uh, earlier for multiple intelligences bloom's taxonomy and crawl cycle uh, and this uh, most of these are related to experiential learning uh, practice based or uh, activity based learning uh, interactivity and that's why uh, we also try to make sure that all of these are explained in detail in the uh, teachers manual this is something that Uh, all teachers are you must be already knowing about you must have already utilized these in your classes uh, you must have creatively uh, reinforced them in your uh, in your lessons but this is uh, as for the teachers manual we made sure that any teacher should be able to understand this and that's why we reinforcing these ideas so that uh, it's right there in front of the teachers the call cycle is there uh, then the honey and mumford learning styles also we have included Uh, the vac learning style which is visual auditory and kinesthetic uh, and then uh, the two most important things uh, that we have tried to make sure that each of the tasks and exposures have a sustainable development goals this is something that's going to go on till uh, the students graduate and their kids graduate so it's important that they understand how to uh, work towards the su- sustainability development goals through design uh, and then the indian knowledge system is also over there to admit uh, the objectives of designing innovations course is again repeated over here it's there in the task book as well as in the curriculum book uh, and as well as in the teachers manual uh, as you can see this is the beautiful mind map that i was talking to you about where you can see the birds eye view of the entire course that is to be taught uh, as you can see these are the four chapters that are going going on this introduction and conclusion and each of the chapters we have tried to Uh, make sure that they can be identified using these small symbols of what is exactly that we have that the uh, chapters are including so you can see that these small symbols like design skills uh design sensitivity uh design thinking uh design principles so these are the small icons that we have put down so that it signifies what is uh, what is delivered in that part of the chapter um inside the chapter uh, we uh, it's divided uh, into what kind of exercises or activities uh, or tasks the students are doing and then what exposures or concept information uh, or presentations are being given so it's very easy to easy to understand how it flows from one concept to another how it goes from one exposure to one task and then what can be concluded at the end of the entire course right uh then we've also included the pedagogical strategy of how it goes from refreshing basic ideas to understanding newer concepts then uh, there is a, a teaching method that we have tried to include so that it, there is not too much confusion about virtual teaching methods and in person teaching methods uh, the learning objectives and additional competencies were repeated over here from the task book and as you can see there's a glossary so there are certain terminologies we have included in the entire chapter which we uh, made sure that there are definitions of each of these so that there is uh, so that there's a transparency of understanding what is uh, what is uh, mentioned in the task book uh, if the terms are not understandable 
uh, this is how we have given uh, the chapter information. So as you can see, there is somewhere where uh, teachers need to use their creativity. They need to be able to make it relevant and uh, exciting for students. So there is a synopsis. Uh, there's intelligence is what need to be included and how cross-curricular subjects are included. So these are the subjects that we pointed out that uh, are already included in the chapter. Uh, and then what additional integrated subjects according to you can be added for the same task or for the same exposure that's up to you. So that's why we made the, kept the space empty. This is something that we're trying to make sure that teachers are also use, using this information, this knowledge to be creative themselves, to be problem solvers themselves. Uh, get into the chapter mind map. As you can see, there are two uh, presentations, two tasks and one home assignment uh, and the central idea of the entire chapter. So it's a simpler um, or it's a easy to understand exploded view of the chapter. And then this is how the sample outline goes. So as you can see, we have put a lot of elaborate information and knowledge so that um, most of the things are taken care of and you are able to even um, utilize this knowledge to learn more about uh, what the entire chapter, what the entire presentation is about. So for example, for exposure one, uh, elements of design, which our research just showed you, we've included what the students will be able to do after the exposure the knowledge component of what exactly is included in the entire presentation, uh, the concept information, then the general learning outcomes, uh, certain points to remember of what, to be, what is to be done as preparatory uh, work before going to class. And then a specific a box left empty for specific learning outcomes so that teachers should be able to add more learning outcomes for the students or even remove or even change certain learning outcomes so that the students find it more uh, engaging and uh, the students understand the concept better. Uh, like I said, we've divided the entire concept as well into step-by-step -step concept initiation, elucidation, and concept closure, uh, and as well as giving minutes, uh, minute by minute understanding of what needs to be delivered. This is very, very hardcore point-to-point -point information. And this is so that you, uh, so that there is no uh, difficulty in delivering the entire presentation that is uh, given for the exposure. Again, second exposure will have e uh, equal amounts of information. Uh, it goes into uh, knowledge of what the students will be able to, the learning outcomes, the points to remember, certain learning outcomes, uh, and then the concept initiation, elucidation, and closure. Uh, the, the differences in the tasks, um, what you can see is we've tried to make it uh, simpler, we try to keep less words and we've made, made it into a table so that it's very easy to understand, it's uh, easy to look back of where what you're missing out or if you want to go back and try to read into what is going on. So this is how uh, the task will look. So there's what the students will be able to do after doing the task the knowledge component of what they need to understand, what the teacher needs to understand before they teach, uh, the general learning outcomes, uh, certain points to remember because it's a task, there will be more preparatory challenges. Uh, and then there is a specific learning outcome. This is so that you can include your own exercises, your own parts of the task, so that students understand this uh, even better. And then there's a last task, which is again divided in the same uh, section, in the same way. Then there is the assessment rubric, which is repeated over here so that when after delivering, you understand what is to be assessed at each, each and every part of the assess, uh, of the task. Uh, most of the things will have uh, assessment on the second or the biggest task in the course. And that's why the assessment rubric will be based on what the students create afterwards <clears throat> or after the task. Uh, we've also tried to mention the assessment outcomes uh, of why exactly we need to evaluate the participants and how this evaluation needs to be uh, used in the further parts of their learning. This is something that uh, Hariji will explain uh, better uh, and in more detail with you. And that's how uh, the entire uh, chapter will run. Again, the second chapter will go start with a mind map. Um, there will be <clears throat> synopsis, the integrated subjects, intelligences, and the sample outline the same way that is presented. Uh, as you can see, we've tried to include a lot of links over here, uh, wherever uh, we think that relevant information or in, new information needs to be added. 
uh, this is also a very good place for you to explore and try to look for updated information what is going on in the world related to the same knowledge and the links that uh, are provided in the curriculum book uh, in the task book sorry there's another set of resources and references that will also be given um, for uh, for you to understand more detailed information this could be papers uh, these could be uh, links to detailed uh, uh, detailed exercises that people have already done uh, and such more such knowledge based references goes into the third chapter uh, and then the fourth chapter so all of the chapters are in a very similar format so that it's very easy to go back to the exact point of information that you were looking for uh, to read or uh, to uh, to sort of identify where uh, you need to go and uh, repeat if needed uh, and then at the end of the teachers manual there is faqs for teachers and principals that we have included this is again uh, repeated from the task book or the teachers manual this is very important uh, like the research said that it's a task ahead of us we need to be able to convey uh, each of these uh, important things to parents to students uh, even for ourselves to understand uh, of what is uh, what is design who's designer what is design thinking what is design thinking process again all of this is repeated but it's important that you have it in hand whenever uh, you are looking at different parts of uh, whenever you are uh, look, looking at different types of uh, students or parents uh, that's how the faqs will run and then another set of references for a linking with the references so with that um, i my uh, walk through of the teachers manual is over uh, i'm sure there is a lot of information that you will understand while going through it yourself uh, and uh, there is a lot of detailed understanding that you will come to uh, i am pretty sure that all of you also have questions but in the room of time uh, i think uh, because i'm running like 5 minutes ahead of time so i'll uh, finish end my talk here uh, and whatever questions you have i can answer them offline or you can also send them uh, to me in email which i can answer directly right thank you so much for your time thank you so much for listening uh, and i'm so glad you guys had a good time uh, with the activity thank you Thank you, Hari Ji. I think uh, I, you can take it over now. Thank you, Prajakta. I think that was useful, uh, and I'm pretty sure that uh, people have been benefited by it. Uh, thank I, you, ma uh, thank you, sir, madam, and thank you, sir. We can uh, start with you, sir. Okay. Thank you so much, and. Uh, i can see a lot of people sitting there thank you and uh, before we start i would like all of you to kind of follow a basic fundamental principle and that principle is that uh, what we are going to do is that because it will be difficult for me to otherwise understand what is the generic crowd understanding and how all of you are able to uh, uh, react to or understand to what i'm saying so before we do that i would just have a uh, ground rule so if you put your left hand up that will be considered as a okay and this means uh, you have not understood if you put your left hand up it is considered as a and that means you have not understood if you put your right hand up that means some bit partially you have understood what was being said that will be considered as b okay and if you put both your hands up like hands up that means you have understood everything what i'm saying okay that is c so what is a can you show me a okay left hand up left hand uh, b what is b right hand up and can you show me c oh, people are reluctant okay thank you thank you so uh, a b and c are all three different uh, ways of telling you so in between i will be asking you whether you have understood or not so you will have to tell me 
uh, whether it is A, B or C. So uh, first of all, uh, it's quite a happy moment to be uh, back even if it is I'm online uh, with the Sai International School, it's it's my school and I, I really kind of learned a lot of things there. So, and I could see a lot of uh, people who were there and uh, a lot of staff also. And Bhubaneswar is a very cozy place uh, in my heart. So good to be there. Now, uh, to start with design thinking, as Prajakta has been saying, <clears throat> and... Uh, I'm sure Ravi sir has given you the initial briefing. So I'm going to quickly share with you a, a slide uh, on my screen. So uh, I hope you are able to see my screen. So um, when we do design thinking and innovation, uh, we need to assess the development of the children with the ideas that we are trying to push them for and uh, look for some solutions. So there are various uh, ways in which we can assess them. And those ways of assessment, uh, if you see, are uh, sometimes self-assessment. So there can be uh, things regarding uh, puppet design or toy design and all. But today, when we are trying to uh, bring to your table uh, a basic activity also from which you would be uh, kind of uh, doing something hands-on. I'm just going to tell you how you are going to assess that activity. So the question essentially I think is uh, the toy design and how to construct a toy using the given materials and how to design that, teaching the concept of design and also teaching and learning, like the uh, things will be happening in individual groups that you are going to do it. And also the experience of the concept that is uh, under discussion, like today it is uh, a toy, that how the experience of the toy and what is the demonstration of that toy. So that, that will be there. Generally, when we do that with the children, we would like um, this to go to the parents also. And in that case, we want them to be graded. So the grading that generally is advisable is like this. So if a child is from the beginning, above beginning, developing, uh, above developing, promising. So this is a 10 point scale that you can see here. And then uh, this scale uh, will give you the, uh, the details of how you mark the children. Now, before you mark the children, you should understand uh, how you are going to do the basic grid assessment. Please understand that this is going to be a formative assessment, not a summative assessment. So it's uh, there is a there is a grid with which you will be trying to assess the children. Now, another thing which I want to highlight here is that this is for the first time in the lives of the children that they will be assessed on something that they had the freedom to make or do. Otherwise, what happens in a normal class is that they are always given that you do this and then on the basis of what you have asked them to do, they are supposed to be judged. Whereas here, you will be giving them a lot of freedom that, okay, if you have to design a toy, how would you design a toy? If you have to design a puppet, how would you design? If you have to write a story, how would you write a story? What the characters would be? So the freedom is given to the children to think and come up with their own ideas and solutions. So when the question is open-ended, the assessment becomes extremely difficult because then what happens is uh, you're not very clear on the ideas of what you are expecting because what will happen is that the child may supersede your ideas at times and he may have a completely different idea from what you are trying to teach those children. So uh, under such circumstances, uh, this is what we call as critical thinking, problem solving, all the 21st century skills that we teach or we are trying to teach children. Because otherwise, we are just telling them that we are going to teach you 21st century skills. But this is a very 
good framework that is being provided by design thinking and innovation curriculum where you teach the entire process of critical thinking problem solving communication all those skills which you have been talking about as 21st century skills and hence it becomes extremely important the assessment and this assessment should finally go to the parent also so you should try to whatever you are trying to do and assess with the children that is finally reported to the parent so that the parent also gets to know that where my child stands in these critical areas which are useful once the child actually leaves the school into the real world so if uh, you have to look at uh, the question uh, which is say uh, a toy design then uh, what is the making and the material used was the making of the toy easy was it complex was it done with an idea that yes everyone can do it or was it done in such a manner that only a very expert person can do it so what was the material used by the child was the material a very uh, basic locally available material or was the material not available there at all and the child had to procure it from say russia no that is uh, that is not the best thing to do and then the concept and the objective of what the whole thing was done supposing the toy was trying to uh, showcase a scientific and a technical objective now was that objective vaguely achieved or was it defined very clearly and the toy was able to explain that objective very clearly and all those things so the objectives whether they are being uh, met by that particular toy or not supposing you were trying to teach a child uh, say uh, say the pitch of sound and if you are trying to teach children the pitch of sound and some child brings in uh, a, a leaf of banana uh, and the and the base uh, rod of banana leaf is uh, not necessarily leaf of banana it can be a leaf of papaya in fact which has a a base rod which which can act like a small flute so if a child brings that uh, papaya leaf and uses that small stem of the papaya leaf's base as a flute and then shows you that the different lengths of this flute can have different pitch of sound thereby telling you the relationship between the pitch and the length i think if it is locally available that's a great thing isn't it because then the child has kind of uh, gotten the whole concept locally and is able to explain the whole uh, concept also very well similarly what was the experience of the person who used or that toys because not necessarily that supposing you are making a toy you understand it very well but the moment you give it to someone else then either that person is not able to use it neither it is kind of understandable by it and neither it is uh, very innovative for the person to kind of handle so how was the experience of the other user apart from the one who has made it and similarly what is the business objective skill there while the demonstration of the toy is being done because whatever you are going to ask the children to do you will also ask them to demonstrate it now demonstration is a very important business skill because it's a communication skill and how you are going to present yourself in front of whomsoever you are whosoever is your audience and how are you going to break your information into smaller parts so that your audience is very clear with what you are trying to give it to your audience so that way keep these things in mind and then arrive to the next uh, grid which is there this is the grid which will be used technically for assessment now whatever i said in the previous slide those are important factors which you will keep in your mind while using this grid for judgment so this is a very very important thing so uh, supposing you are wanting to uh, judge a toy so toy to learn a concept 
So a beginner would have learning objective of the concept, which is not technically met, neither clear. But a developing person would have some extent of understanding it. A promising person would have a moderate understanding, whereas a proficient will have a very fair good of understanding, fair bit of understanding and will be clear. And similarly, the excellent person will have a very good idea of the concept of the toy that he or she is trying to present. Now, if you have any difficulty in understanding these concept things, you need to go back to this grid. That what we are talking about, concept. The scientific and the technical object through the toy experience is vaguely defined. Whereas the scientific objective is clearly defined. Whereas the scientific objective is thoroughly met by the toy designer and also is experienced in a similar man manner by the, by the other person who is a user of it. So if that grid is clear and this grid will become more clear to you, in terms of how you assess that. Similarly, what was the experience of the toy? Now, experience of the toy was not met at all. Experience of the concept of the toy is to some extent. Some extent means the experiencer is only the maker is the one who is the experiencer right now. And uh, that, that person is feeling good. But then experience is met to a moderate extent. That means the other person can also experience to bit some level of whatever was by the maker of the toy. Same kind of experience. So once you go from this level to the highest level where the experience as the maker had, the similar experience was also experienced by a person who was using the toy, then that is a complete excellent uh, trip or a grid. Okay. Similarly, the demonstration. So you will be demonstrating it and also the other people will also be demonstrating it means the user will be finally demonstrating it. So uh, while the person who has made it or that group which has made it, how they are doing the demonstration and how is it working, whether the demonstration was with errors, if it had few errors, it had multiple errors and it was error free. No errors can be, you try to make a demonstration of trying to uh, showcase some, something which you have made as a toy and it does not work finally. So then that means the demonstration did not work, but sometimes it may work, but not very accurately. So then uh, partially, and then you will have to judge, judge on this grid from one to the scale of 10, how it was working. So this becomes, an, uh, becomes a very critical understanding for anyone who is going to make the toy and also do it. These are some of the samples that were done earlier and we saw people using and uh, experiencing like this was a, a, a team which had made a, a pyramid which was of the food chain and trophic levels and then this was something which was rotatable. Uh, and 3D and there are people who have made uh, various concepts uh, of uh, how the uh, boomerang works and other things. So all these things are essential uh, parts of the toy design, what you are going to do today. But the thing is that whatever you are trying to convey should be within the paradigms of whatever has been provided, it should not go to a very high extent of uh, we are going to kind of make a car or something. No, we are going to make something very basic to explain a very basic concept. So that's the whole uh, idea. And then uh, creativity, problem solving, co collaboration, communication and presentation all will be judged in this. And you, uh, once you do this yourself, I would request after that, plan it up in such a manner that it gets included in the report card of your school. One single sheet. So that the parent can be given that this is what was done with the children and this is how your child stands on creativity, problem solving, collaboration and communication. Because these are the things which many of the parents are looking forward from their children. And this will be something that you will actually provide them. Otherwise, if you see in mathematics, in the other contents that we are doing, we are not actually providing them 
the opportunities of uh, creatively problem solving and collaborating and communication and presentation so this is something which uh, happens through this and i thought that uh, this would be useful to you now uh, before i uh, further proceed i would like to understand from you whether uh, it is a b or c oh everyone remember c thank you so much hmm. now uh, as a as a one simple exercise i would like you all uh, to do is that <clears throat> Uh, one simple exercise I would like you all to do is that uh, there was a very favorite thing I used to do, uh, which was uh, to teach uh, people that uh, assessment essentially can go wrong if teacher makes a mistake. Okay. So uh, if a person, uh, uh, maybe the person who is in the camera angle right now just in front of swati ma'am um, the person who is standing yes with the check shirt yes sir can you please stand up yeah yeah uh, can you just clap uh, can you clap loudly for five ten seconds okay can you clap loudly five ten seconds with a rhythm Okay. Can you clap five tens uh, means loudly with a rhythm for a longer period of time, say 30 seconds. Oja, can you put the mic closer to him? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, why didn't you clap in the first go for 30 seconds? Because I was not instructed as a Okay, okay. Can I ask the crowd uh, to judge which was the best clap? A, worst, B, uh, the, sorry, C, the best. And if the first one you consider as A or the second one you consider as B and the third one you consider as C. So the crowd can give a right now uh, assessment of which clap was the best, the first, second or the third, A, B or C. So the crowd is giving an assessment of C. We can see. Okay. Everyone likes your clapping of C. Okay. Now, one very important thing that we learn from here, sir, is that if the instruction of the teacher is clear, then the performance of the student becomes better. The performance of the student will be A, if the teacher does not give clear instruction. I did not teach you clapping. I just gave very poor instruction. Then I improved my instruction. The way my instructions improved, the way your performance also improved, isn't it? So one of the most important thing to learn here is that we have to be very clear with how we are going to give instructions to the children. If the children fail, it is very simple to understand who failed. You know, if you failed at A level, then it was not you who were failing. It was me because I was the one who was giving poor instruction. So we have to be very clear with our instructions. Then only we will be able to give a very good output from the children. Okay. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. You can introduce yourself, sir. If Oja can give them the mic. Uh, I'm Subandhya Shekhar I teach in TGT Science. Okay. Thank you, Subandhu. Okay. Thank, Thank you, sir. So, uh, Ravi, sir, I think uh, I am done. I think uh, you can proceed forward. Um, the time I was allocated, I have just now completed. Thank you so much. And best of luck to all of you. Uh, and Ravi, sir, this is my... Uh, this is my school of my heart, actually. You know, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> we just heard that, you know, so thanks yeah. so much. Yeah. So my teacher was Mr. B.K. Sahu, who was here uh, right now. He's no more, but then he was an amazing guy. So, mm. fine. <clears throat> yeah, thanks a lot. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm. Thanks, sir. It, it was a wonderful session.
nice to hear see you and hear you sir thank you ma'am thank you okay i'll leave now Okay, now we welcome uh, Ms. Rupa, ma'am, for our next uh, speaker. We warmly welcome, uh, madam. Absolutely, absolutely. Anybody from here? Any different opinion? Why the excitement first and then the worry? Okay, I'm going to show you something. Just stand up. You've been sitting for too long. In Bengali, we say ghash gojiye gache. Right? I'm sure there is something like that in Uriya also. All right, all of you can cross your hands. You know how to cross your arms, yeah? We all know how to, how do we cross our arms? We cross our arms like this, okay. Put your hands down. All right, now again, slowly, and this time while doing it, think how you're doing it. Cross your arms. Okay, done? Now put your hands down. Now, last time, second time when you did it, you were conscious what you did. Now, put the hand which one on top was on top lowered. And the one which was the lower one above. Sir said best thing. No worry about lower and above. Now. 
sit down. I'm going to ask you to analyze this very, very small activity I asked you to do. What happened in your first turn? Casually, yes. Casually. Yeah, yeah. We know it all. Second time, what did you do? You saw the process. Good word. We saw the at the back. I love people at the back, you know. I love. Because all the snoring sounds come from the back or the front. But do you know the psychology of a classroom has changed now? The naughty ones are no one more at the back. They are in the front. Yeah, this is the new, new trend in classes. All the naughty ones in front and the humble and silent. <laughs> so, so anybody from the back, what happened in the second one? You were, sorry, ma'am. You were consciously doing it. What happened in the third time? What happened in the third time? You did revision. <laughs> Good one. Yes. You revised. Well, how, how did I do it? And then you, you tried to do opposite. Let me tell, tell you. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. I have done this exercise since CCE started. Because I used to train teachers, master trainers during CCE days also. Yes, ma'am. You want to say something? Yes. You also analyzed. Yes. That's the revision. I think she put the word revision, analysis. So, of course, you can see how your Bloom's taxonomy was going from the lots to the thoughts. Did you notice that? So, remembering very easy. Understanding. Second time, what did we do? Understanding, right? And third time, we were analyzing, applying the, what was it we were applying? And what were we analyzing? Our action, okay, hold that thought. Process, okay, hold that thought also. Ma'am had also used the word process. The Pattern, pattern, yes, yeah, the pattern, yes. Okay, you, was, you were coordinating between the head and the good thought, good thought. So you were doing psychosomatic, right? Because your brain and your physical was trying to coordinate. But what was the simple thing? Actually, it's not that complicated. It's very simple. Okay, that is also a thing. Our ego tells us, Are galti mat kar baju wala dekh raha hai. Okay, so that also happens, right, sir? Very simple thing. Ladies and gentlemen, we were bringing in change. Anytime we bring in change, our whole system has to think why don't people like change? In in spite of hearing repeatedly that the only constant in life is a dichotomy, right? And yet, whenever change comes, we want to go back to this and not... Imagine each time I do it, but I forget. I have to consciously do it. This is almost like 2010. So... Look at the number of years I've been doing this experiment with people. Still, I forget. So change needs complete lots. You have to analyze it, evaluate it, and then create it. Have I been able to give you the Bloom's taxonomy through this simple thing? Right? We began with lots, which is remembering, understanding, and applying. Then we went on to analyze, evaluate and create. In this case, very small thing of creating a new way of holding our hands, right? Or crossing our hands. Of course, I love Sir the best.
these are the naughty ones also and these are the innovative ones also isse ab kar le upar niche tu maine to sab ko equal kar diya right so with that we move to the presentation so we are going to have a little sheet which is yes sir thank you welcome to sai international school bhuvaneshwar those who didn't feel welcome now please be welcome of course madhu ma'am has made us feel very welcome and even sir <laughs> so thank you yes same as our school sir thank you some things don't change whether it's gurgaon or bhuvaneshwar i'm going to give you 5 minutes to discuss in your table and write the answers to these questions okay in 5 minutes we will discuss it and we will discuss how important it is all right so please start and we'll adhere to time because there's a paucity of time I think you have the hard copy. Some of you, you have this free conference hard copy, so you can write it individually, or you can write it in a discuss it and write in a group. Very nice, sir. please do understand the question what are the best practices you use for enhancing curiosity in your students in the school why are you being asked to focus on curiosity and determine its importance in the teaching learning process second question is the task you are being given is what are the best practices you use for introducing a concept in the class by your teachers or by you make sure to integrate sdgs design thinking vuka which ma'am told you already prajakta ma'am what is vuka we'll discuss it again multiple intelligence and so on with the lesson plans discuss with your colleagues as to how important it is to plan a multiple activity approach to teaching a concept in class tabulate your discussion briefly below third one the third task is what are the best practices you use for enhancing innovative and creative thinking skills in your school what is the importance of the usage of other multiple intelligences will teaching which helps in enhancing innovate and creative thinking innovative sorry and creative thinking and last one is discuss design thinking with your colleagues even if you don't do the last one it's okay but the first three are very important found it ma'am that sheet is not there should be there uh do you have the downloaded format because it's there in the downloaded format do you have yes i'll just sorry no anyway you will have to i'll i'll see if i can send it to you otherwise it's on screen if you can't see you'll have to go in front yeah screen 
Ma'am, do you all have more than one sheet here? Can I take one for the back? I'll take yours, ma'am. Thank you. Sir, you all can also share, yeah? Just click a photograph, sir, and then, yeah? Just click a photograph. Just take it from Sarah. Huh? And then give it back to me. I'll give it back to you. Ma'am, there. Ma'am, you said, no? It's volatility, ambiguity. U is for uncertainty. V is volatility, okay. U is uncertainty, C is complexity, and A is ambiguity. No, no, they're clicking the photograph and I'll give it to you. Yeah, you also click, click it and then... Anybody else wants to click? Thank you. All right. Due to paucity of time, we will go on to the first question. Who's got the answer to the first one? Okay. Okay. Process, ma'am. Keep your hand down. Yes, sir. First question. Yes, ma'am. For first of all, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So my answer to the first question is that uh, curiosity develops self-interest that leads to enhancement of cognitive skills. Okay. okay. And by being curious, we can make student more curious. Okay. And that also leads to a participation process. The students can become more participative and uh, there is a, uh, what you can say, uh, cause and effect relationship is also being built. Okay. So for example, if I uh, uh, say in a class that, do you know this? Uh, do you want to know? So when I use the uh, term, do you know? So they become more attentive and that, that becomes more participative in, in, in nature. Absolutely, absolutely. So, when I told you, when, sir, wait, hold the, hold it. When I told you that you have to cross your hands, what was the first thought which came into your mind? Uh, so it's a random, randomly. Yeah, you didn't know what was to follow. But yes. what was the first thought? First, thought? first thought was to be random, just to fold my hands. Yeah, but what was your thought? That was your action, sir. What was your thought? Okay, okay. Some activity is going to be done. Did anybody think anything different? Thank you, sir. Okay, ma'am thought something different. Yes. Why do we need to fold our hands? Yeah, why do we need to? True, very true. But it also made you think, right? Somebody there. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> true, true. The first thought that came to your mind was she's trying to make us be more awake. To move out of our comfort, comfort zone. zone. Absolutely. Yeah, that was... Absolutely. Thank you. Yes. Warm up. That is true. It was warm up. I told you about Ghash, right? So that you understood that. After that, you thought. Yes. Uh, one point comes to my mind. What to do next? What to do next? Yes. Right. So that's curiosity. Yes, ma'am, definitely. That is curiosity. What next? You want to ask what next? So thank you, ma'am. You know, I also used to teach English earlier. And I have one 
subject which I love teaching. That's called life skills. We all know that CBSE has life skills. That's my favorite subject. And I must tell you that even when children move out from our school, and it's a 16-year-old school, Sun City School, children say, ma'am, we come back. When we come back here, we remember your life skills classes. And I'll tell you the reason for that. I begin my classes by taking a bouquet of flower. Earlier, I used to buy it. My first period for life skills would always entail taking a bouquet of flowers. And I would go to the class and say, why do you think I'm carrying a bouquet of flowers? So the, they understood that it's going to be a lot of interaction, right? So that was, that was the intention also. Later, of course, so much of spending of money, I made one paper bouquet and I used to carry it to class, okay? My second topic used to be uh, something to do with communication. So I used to carry a big teddy bear. Imagine going to class eight with a teddy bear. Yes, and you know what? The teachers used to ask me, ma'am, what are you going to do with that teddy bear in the class? What have I done? I have ignited the curiosity. I have ignited. But the maximum questions I used to get, the day I used to carry, and there used to be seven, eight sections. There are seven, eight sections of each class. You know, So one day I would have three, another day I would have three, another day I would have two like that because some days I have to be free also to do my administrative work, which I least like. But having said that, is the day I used to have a big bowl with lots of potatoes in it, peelers and knives. Now, this is something which is very unique, right? And guess what I teach with that? Leadership qualities. All right. Now, don't sit now, teach us right now. I'll teach you some other day. But if given a chance. So, you can imagine everybody looks and the little children, ma'am, what is there? Because they are seeing a big vessel in my hand and then they can see the potatoes and the peelers so the first thing to do anything and if you are is make them curious you will never have to teach for a single day because they are so eager to know more that they will learn on their own make sense to you start carrying something to class okay right uh, because again, we'll have to move fast. What are the best practices you use for introducing a concept in the class? I think I've kind of shared something. Now, I'll give you a, one more example. How have you learned? And that's an answer to the second question. How have you learned vowels and consonants in class? Okay, you come here next to me. You come here and you stand here. Okay. How have you learned vowels and consonants? You stand next to me. Who's going to answer that? Anybody has learned differently? Five? Five? Anybody besides five that there are? Wait, wait. As I told you, you are not to be in the crowd. You come here. Everybody, anybody else who has not learned it this way? Five what? Vowels. You have learned differently, sister? Yes, sister. After me. Uh -huh. English teacher taught me through a rhyme. Okay. A E I O U. Anakar. Ana is elephant. Right. Anakar. That means in front of that sound, we have to use A. Ah. Okay. Anakar. But still, it was A E I O U. What did you say, ma'am? Okay, you mean all right, fine. That is true. That is up. So we won't get into it. There are diphthongs, there are slides, a lot of it that we have in English, which we are taught. We won't get oh. into it. Uh, but I'm going to teach you how I teach. I taught while I taught English. Times and all? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. So quickly listen, and then we will move on to the next thing. Thank you, sir. I would tell, this was because we were doing etymology. In English, etymology is how a word changes. Okay? Have you heard of the name Praveen? Praveen? Pratap? 
but you've also heard people sing Parveen, Partap, okay? You've heard Mary, okay? And you've also heard the same person being called Mary, right? So this, how etymology, I'm giving you a very silly example, but this is etymology, how a word evolves or changes, right? So because I had to teach IGCSE, the Cambridge students, some concept. So I used to begin with vowels and consonants. So I used to tell them tomorrow, I'm going to teach you vowels and consonants. Come to the play field. So this, some naughty ones would say, come to the play field. I said, yes, to the play field. So they thought, Acha, she's going to make us sit there. So I used to tell them that now you run. Okay. In groups, depending on how many students used to be in the class, that you have to run on the track. And they would run on the track, come back. And you know, when you run a, a track, you're breathing, you're doing your panting, right? And then I would say, what are you doing to the student? And this, they would tell me, I'm just, let's catch our breath. I said, but what are you doing? I'm super excited, wanting an answer. And they would say, but man, and some, you know, many children in India are pretty obedient. But so some of them would say, I'm breathing loudly. Some, of course, would say, I'm panting. And I would say, that's a vowel. So they used to be surprised. You know why I used to say, that's a vowel? Right, ma'am. You got on. Because all of us have been taught vowels in the wrong way. The definition of a vowel is any sound made without an impediment to the breath coming out is a vowel. Will you remember this forever? Okay. Any sound ooh, ah, e, which does not have any impediment here or with your lips. So there's a lot we can go into because I'm a teacher of English. So I can go into your palate, go into labiate. There's so much, but I don't want to get into it. If that stops the breath, then it is a consonant. If it doesn't stop the breath, then it's a vowel. Don't forget. So this is what exactly I'm trying to tell you. Have you thought Remember what Projector Ma'am said out of the box? To make your children learn the correct things. All right? All right. Let's go to design thinking now. We're going to do an activity, a quick activity. Give away the papers, Madhu Ma'am. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Each one can be given one, one newspaper. Each one can keep one newspaper. Yeah, thank you. And then. No, each one, one newspaper. Each one, one newspaper. Now wait for instructions. Wait for instructions. Remember, very important. Here is your newspaper. Make a design. Okay? One, one instruction. Now I'm going to give you the instruction. All right. I think most of you have got it. You have to make you have to make, sir. Sir, you've not got it. You have to make a design, okay, which is unique. Don't make aeroplanes again. Which is unique, has multiple usage. Okay, so what are the things you're going to do now? Sir, uh, Professor uh, Ravi Puvaya talked about the 21st century skills also, right? And I think even Prajakta ma'am spoke about it. What are the 21st century skills? 
What are the 21st century skills? Creativity, communication. Collaboration, teamwork is called collaboration. It's actually five C's. Creativity, communication, collaboration, critical thinking, and done. Creativity. Which is the fifth one? I think we said all five, right? Creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, communication. This is. Anyway, it'll come to me. So clear instructions. You have to make a unique design which has not been made like the aeroplane or the box and it should have multiple uses. Okay. Now your time starts now and you have 10 minutes to do it and I can ask any table to come and present it. So be careful. Okay. Your certificates are in my hand. Group activity, group activity. See how I missed out an instruction? Now that would have led to problems. Yes, it's a group activity. You can make multiple things, but, and multiple usages, but it has to be a unique thing. A unique thing. Also try to relate it to your teaching. You have 10 minutes to go. Four of you can be together. Group activity. But the application of that, whatever you are doing, it has to be applied, used. Unique, unique. Sir, you like Jhalmuri, I can see. All Jhalmuris? Think more. How will pen stand stand? How will pen stand stand? Chalmuri.
Oh. He's getting destroyed by a square. There's no weapon. He's just in the way. You can move it to a rhombus also. Rhombus. Yeah, if you pull it from one corner. Ha. All right. So I have been around and I have seen, though there are three, two more minutes to go, two to three minutes to go. Anybody who's ready? Okay, come, you come because your yes was very confident. I asked Sir Jalmuri, he says, no, no, other uses. So let's have Sir come up. You, whole team has to come up, whole team. Everybody, it's not a single thing. It's a group activity. Sir, please come. Now we are going to remember our instructions. Unique, multiple uses and multiple faceted. Come on. Yes, sir. Mike is all yours. Sir? Okay, uh, very good afternoon to everyone yeah. present here. Uh, thank you, ma'am, for calling us and letting us uh, give this presentation in front of everyone. Yeah, as ma'am was saying that this might look like uh, a thing in which Bhelpuri Jhalmuri is sold. To keep it at the very basic level, yes, it is a, th it is a thing in which Jhalmuri, Bhelpuri, uh, peanuts, yeah, these things can be sold. But if we go into deeper layers of in interpretation and if we try to bring in the design thinking into it, this can be something, this can be used as a funnel by which we pour water, uh, oil, mainly kerosene oil. We do not use kerosene oil now, but previously this can be used as a funnel. This can be used as a bouquet because flowers can be put in this kind of an arrangement and can be given to someone. This can be used as a torch. Torch means uh, in Bengali, we call it a moshal. So that kind of a torch, which was used in uh, the freedom movement, in times of the freedom movement, and mainly in 1905 when the partition of Bengal was going on. So that time, this kind of a torch came uh, in um, importance and it got its significance. And most importantly, this can be, this can be shown in a deeper layer of understanding to the students in the form of an inverted pyramid. And by bringing this concept of inverted pyramid into the society, we can uh, tackle and we can uh, obviously raise our voice against the discrimination and the other social evils which are very much prevalent in the society. And last but not the least, the thing which we are using, it connects to one of the SDGs of saving the environment. We are using a paper and nowadays we are all moving away from plastics. So we are not using a plastic and instead we are using a paper in order to save the environment and bringing the concept of SDG into the curriculum. That's all from Very us. Very nice. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We can also <laughs> use it as a loudspeaker kind of a thing. All so right. That's all. Thank you. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you. Come, sir. This team and then. So I can only call three teams. So I'm going to call the three teams. And then we have one more activity. Then in that activity, I'll ask the others. Please come. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, this is a very small page construction done by me because I'm not good in art. Then too, let me explain the thing what I have made. This is a small uh, piece of paper. If I'm going to hold it like this in a two way, then, uh, thank you, sir. If I'm going to hold it like this, it can act as a paper bag where I keep my things. If I'm going to use it like this, it's going to be a fan. And if I'm going to look into uh, its meaning, like every subject, every chapter, it starts with the introduction page. It goes on unfolding serious things, good things, and it ends with an exercise. So to the student, we can also explain that if a person is uh, having a negative attitude or do, do not want to explore life, for them, life is an end game. It will stuck over here. Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. But if a student or a person is a positive mentality, we will just simply 
back for this page and life is unfolding experience for us okay so first of all we have to make our student a positive thinker if we make our student a positive thinker they will definitely grow in my life in their life that what i believe and that what our management our school also believe so we always uh, uh, tell our student to be a positive thinker first then to study the rest of the thing that's our goal motto map and one more thing what i missed out is like if we are going to hold it uh, in this manner it can act like a puppet voice mouth hi my name is santa what's your name so it can work like that also very simple piece of paper but if you imagine it can be a gold thank you but before you go there's one thing thank you sir for holding the mic for thank her thank you sir that was the most important thing in today's world nobody is humble anymore to do things for others and people also take it for granted are he is held the mic for me so what big deal thank sir, you sir I thank you ma'am i give my blessings to you for carrying on with humility this is a dying art today to be humble you can learn as much as you want but leadership quality the fifth and the highest level of leadership says only people who are humble truly are the people who are successful god bless you sir right the last one we are going to do ma'am sorry before you they had put up their hand yeah i'm so sorry about that because the, of the first three who finished come ma'am if but have you got a chance or no ma'am you all have not please then we'll move to the next hello good afternoon everyone good afternoon uh the concept what we have designed is a dual board which consists of two different boards holding the same thing uh depending upon 2022 skills what sir had and ma'am had taught us we have designed according to that it have three different uses like social use economic use and as well as traditional use wow. uh, i want ma'am to explain that socially actually ma'am was explaining regarding good afternoon to everyone before good that afternoon. Uh, actually ma'am was uh, as she is coming from south she was uh, explaining us in kerala people they don't uh, like to take lotus and fish together in one boat the both thing we are getting from the water uh, uh, water like uh, ponds right but they don't want to take them both together because the lotus is useful for worship and fish is uh, considered to be a non veg so here we can take lotus one side and the fish can be taken <laughs> the other side so the social like the problem is being solved by this and similarly we have some uh, like eco economical issues uh, like uh, use also of that so for uh, for teaching students in the school we can use this as gender uh, uh, for making them understand what is actually gender discrimination is like this is a girl and this is a boy if they are sometime people think they can't be sitting together and they can't be like uh, Uh, some some way it is thought it is not good and we can teach students accordingly the discrimination and we should not follow it. that is what and the traditional use is uh, we can use it for fun also for taking the bride people and the groom people during a marriage some uh, some places there are they have to like uh, overcross the river like thing right there we can use one side groom and their family and the other side bride and their family as well one more thing we can take one lesson from uh, this uh, activity uh, like a boat as boat uh, is in water so it is selling in the water so we should also go on doesn't matter hurdles will come so like a boat we should go ups and downs in your life will come but we should go on we should carry with them so that's why we are teacher here and this message should go with the students as well thank you one more thing good afternoon everyone i have prepared one bucket okay you can see this bucket and in this bucket we can give okay okay it's okay it's okay uh in this bucket we can uh, put something uh, to give the gifts okay and something the vegetables whenever we are going for the markets 
okay yes this is eco friendly also <laughs> that's why all right thank you everyone thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you it's a very nice activity and it it's very impressive also. the good one thank sir you. is going to do okay <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much uh is this statement correct after this what were you doing just now what did you do just now you did a design right you made a design sir talked about design you made a design so what is a design what is a design idea idea is a design yeah creativity somebody said presentation anything else what's a design thinking out of the box yes ma'am the result the outcome you mean to say the outcome yes sir the problem solving we haven't come to that yet sir we just made a design ah so what was the design what 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 was fine okay fine fine ma'am is jumping out of the chair yes yes ma'am please i said design what is a design okay sister says sensitivity to issue i'll come back to you sir yes yes anything different did i use the word unique yes so design is first and foremost anything that is unique different right thank you yes ma'am yes yes ma'am okay okay design how that will have an outcome like ma'am said in a situation okay sir something which is innovative and user friendly okay anybody else sir ji at the back i have reversed the class at the back sir yes sir sir you are nodding your head you sir yes sir checkered shirt yes sir yes sir mike do you what do you feel how, how can design be used what is design Uh, come here sir come here everybody design is something yes. uh, that we can uh, represent used to teach the students uh -huh. uh, if i am going to teach some concept uh -huh. if i use something that student can imagine okay only okay i like the word imagine i It... created that thing yes. that only student can imagine only and okay. if i bring that thing in front of them then they can learn beautiful absolutely that is design so there are three four very key words we've learned about design thank you sir we've learned imagine first right what happened when i asked you to design you started thinking imagining what will come out right second thing unique second thing was it is unique what was the third thing creativity which came out the outcome that happened right and we'll have a last presentation please come quickly and then we'll move to the next one all right after this we'll move to the next thing and we will see what is design and then what is the next thing that we have to do yes please Yes, ma'am. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, ma'am. Thank you for the opportunity. This is a unique example of the multiple intelligence that this team has put together. Yes. Because we started off with a boat because that was the easiest thing to make. Right. And with the boat, we associated so many concepts that just flawlessly kept flowing in. So the boat and the waves can demonstrate. the uh, you know physics. concepts of geography concepts of physics which um, mom had said about the various shapes which bring in um, mathematics it can also be taken to teach uh, literature and we can use it as caps uh, uh, telling about various characters we can use it for biology where we can use it for various 
uh, organs and talk about the functions. And this finally is the feather on the cap, which was made by another <laughs> team member. Thank so you so much. Just one, All right. one addition uh, about yes. life skill. Yes. By making this boat, we can explain children that if you want a smooth life, then we have to give a proper shape to our life. Without the proper shape, we can't move smooth. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much. So I think you have all understood what is design. From there, you have... Oh, sir, my sister is putting up both her hands. Okay, do I get an A, B or C? From design, one word, we come to two words. Right. From design, one word, we come to two words, which is design thinking. Now, design is there, but what we did thinking has been put into this. So, what is design thinking? Okay. It is actually a solution to what? Thank you, ma'am. It is a solution definitely to you. In management, you are taught. Now, I didn't do a management course, but I did do a leadership management course at IIM Ahmedabad. And over there, they say, if you don't have a solution, you are the problem. That means you are only putting, like, have you seen people coming and saying, sir, this is not working. Achha, ye kar lo, ye theek ho but sir, you have people like this in your school? Yeah, but sir, this is this, this, this. Then the person says, okay, you can do this. But sir, the person is not ready to get into that positive mode, right? So, so we need a solution. Look at what's written over here. So what is design thinking? Let us start off with the problem solving first. And remember, so design is being creative, thinking, but thinking in a creative manner. This is also thinking, this is also creative, but there is a third aspect to it, the solution. Because what are you doing here? When do you have a solution? When you solve a? Absolutely. So this is the way you're going to solve it through what is the first word written there? First, first, logical reasoning. You can't do it without logical reasoning. The chair is broken. Okay, or the table is broken. This table is actually breaking. If the table is broken, then we have to think of how to make the table all right. Not the table cloth all right. That's the logical reasoning. If you make the table cloth all right, will the table become all right? So that is the logical reasoning we have to use. Okay? And there are three ways of doing it. And I'm going to move a little faster because I have just 10 minutes left. Inductive, deductive, and abductive. Who knows what's inductive way of learning and what's deductive way of learning? No, no. We want one person to answer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry? Huh. Which one, sir? I asked you two words. There are two words there. Inductive and deductive. Inductive is from particular to general case. Deductive is general case to Give particular Give me an example, case. sir. This is why uh, children don't understand. Suppose uh, sum of some natural number. Sorry? Sum of n natural number. 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n. That formula is n into n plus 1 by 2. So if we calculate some one, one plus two, one plus three, then understand the formula, then it is inductive. But if we uh, say the first, the formula, then we give some example that is deductive. Ulta. Ulta. So inductive is when you give the formula and they are coming to a conclusion from the formula. And deductive is when you say, let's say we are doing Fibonacci. Okay, so since you took math, I'm taking from there, okay? Let's say we are doing Fibonacci. Now, when you solve in Fibonacci, then the children go and see things in nature 
which follow the rule of Fibonacci, and then they conclude then what is the formula. Uh, yes, then that is deductive. They deduce. They conclude. Okay, sir. So inductive is when you give the formula and they do the sum. Or in my language, because I teach English, I tell you that noun is the name of a place, person, animal, or thing. Right. This is inductive. I have taught you in an inductive manner. Deductive is when I say, "Come on, children, take out the paper and pencil, and let's play a game and name place animal thing." We all play the game, and we say that all the names on this paper are nouns. Then it becomes deductive because they deduce, they conclude what is a noun. Got it, sir? Am I clear with the Fibonacci example and the noun example? I love both of them, sir. Thank you. Is this clear? And when you make a mixture of the two, it's called abductive. All right. Now you have to do this activity quickly. See it, and I'm going to tell you what you have to do. Understand the problem. Brainstorm and discuss possible product or mobile app or outcome that can solve part of the problem. Take inspiration from existing products, but try and come up with something unique. After that, you have to present. Now, what I want you to do, I'm giving you exactly two minutes to go out into the corridor, see one thing that you can improve upon. Okay, all right, quickly. Uh, yeah, do you want to speak to them, sir, before they go? Or no, no, no. Two minutes they have to do this activity. So, yes. Okay. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Are you going to be here only? Ah, oh, fantastic. Okay. Okay. So I'm sorry, I'm not aware of your name. Uh, I am reading your region of Thank you. Wonderful. Wonderful. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are proud to have the regional officer of Bhuvaneshwar uh, here of this region, let me say, uh, over here, Mr. Srinivasan. So, sir will do the problem solving sitting here. You all quickly go for two minutes and come back. Seeing what one thing, and like I said, I'll tell any table to speak. So, please, quickly, I'm giving you two minutes to go and come back. Yes, some people are going with cameras so that they bring back evidence. Oh, you've already got your problem. Very good. <laughs> Come back just now. I get into a mode, but then I don't want to feel like sitting. <laughs>
started seven minutes late, so I'm keeping to that seven minutes late. <laughs> this is also design thinking. <laughs> All right. I think I will have that team come up here. Please come. <laughs> Thank you. I love praise. Where's your team? Team, come up. Achha, after two minutes, they're having water. This mic is there, I think, somewhere. Yes, sir. No, they are all here, sir. Where is mic? Yes, sir. Please take the mic. All right. So last sentence was after that you have to present, after you've seen the problem. Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Very good, sir. Let's give a big round of applause to sir. This is the spirit we need. Yes. Hello, everyone. Myself, Sumit Magurai from Deep West Bokaro. This is our team. Uh, what we have noticed that uh, just now, Outside the corridor, we have found the dustbins are open. That can be a closed one because that invite the flights and all. Okay. And the opposite to this building, uh, the railings are... There's only one problem. And you have to give the solution. If you don't have the solution, you are the problem. The solution, so let's give the solution. Solution is simple. Let's be a cover. Very good. You gave the thing. Thank you very much. Let's give them a big round of applause. Thank you, sir. Uh, uh, good, good afternoon to everyone. And uh, I guess uh, the problem we can just add on something with the dustbins is uh, we can do it with an AI powered dustbins where it can be segregated into recyclable and non recyclable items. And as well as uh, we can segregate plastics, uh, which can be further used in some different activities. So this is one uh, solution. We Sir, can do. what is this AI powered dustbin? I'm hearing it for the first time. AI powered, you mean to say on its own, the AI will use to segregate it? Segregate the items into recycling. Really, sir. Wonderful. Very good. We will wait for you to discover it, sir. <laughs> Thank you. But I like the idea. Lovely idea. Thank you, sir. All right. Let's go to the next. Sir, yeah. they couldn't so, find too much. I, I, I'll just okay, add on yes, here. Please, I yeah, you have rightly said because okay, our children have been set up the dustbin on the other side of the building. They have innovated through this uh, ATL lab. And okay, the dustbin as and when it is in getting filled full, then it, it it will give a message to these people. Wonderful. And okay, also if there is a organic and inorganic, if organic will be used with the inorganic, that will also give a in, uh, information to the people. That's a good one. And the children have done it also. Thank That's a you, good sir. thing. Thank, Thank you. you. People are already thinking ahead. Wonderful. Where is the kachra that people are not thinking of? Where? Where? Tell me. You are thinking of around you. Where are we still not China. thinking of? <laughs> Good one. That's true. In space. We have started dirtying space. Right? Sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Your school is so good. They could only find the cover. So... <laughs> All right, we are going to watch something. It will have to be done from there. So I'll quickly finish it, sir. Yeah. So one of the things is like growing pollution. We already know. <laughs> Do you know where this happened? Which, which year? No, this is not Kedarnath, ladies and gentlemen. This is Uttarakhand, February 2021, where one of the largest chunk of glacier broke away and it was so big that the dam that the government of India was building was swept away. And this is what I'm trying to show you, that what calamity, what disaster we have brought on to because the previous one we were talking about is pollution, right? 
and this is what we have done. So now this is design thinking, and in design thinking, of course, you will think, you will be creative, you will be innovative, and you will find a solution. Okay. This was how it was done. No big deal. Problems were happening in Gujarat already with excessive milk. What did Mr. Kurian do? Dr. Kurian, sorry. He just got all the milk people together and formed a cooperative. That showed the way to what is happening today. Whether you are having the fresh fruit today because Reliance has brought them together or whosoever, that is about Amul. Right, uh, and the full form of Amul is Anand Milk Union Limited, and this is what innovation is. Can you quickly read it? Very great idea. Somebody did talk about idea, right? Solves a real need with tools, techniques, and mindful problem solving, identifying and developing new growth opportunities, balancing of thinking and doing. You have to think and do. Sir just spoke to you about the tools and techniques. Observe, understand. Did we do all this? We went and observed. We understood the problem. We ideated. We thought about it. And then we build. Sir has said he's going to build it, right? That covers. And then we will reflect upon it. Right, testing. Those who have done quality management will also understand. So design thinking is about VUCA. Does everybody know VUCA? Very good way of understanding VUCA. Because there are problems in the world. It comes from V, VUCA, volatility. Okay. U is, C is, complexity. And A is, ambiguity. Okay. You will remember VUCA, V, U, C, and A. All right. So, and then this is how we have the lesson plan in our school. So, I will show you how we do it. Uh, this is how our lesson plans look. Every time I think I'll change it to 22, 23. But anyways, this is last year's when teaching was online. Okay. So, you can see it's science and technology grade 7. And because it was online, we give the books, all books that, because our school has two books. One is a reference book and one is a main course book, okay? Because a lot of children who come from abroad also. So, little different for us. Now, here also we put signatures because they were not meeting the teachers, the parents. So, we put the signatures that these are the teachers' signatures. And this is, of course, the syllabus. Now, we have color-coded it. Can you see? We have that many columns. And this goes to parents. It is put up every six months because we work semester-wise. So, in the first semester, six months, it's put up. This is there on the website also. If you go to the ministry website, it is there. So this, you can see how we put the MIs and the SDGs. Can you see that? So it begins with the number of days of last year. It, then the topic and subtopic. We call them concept teaching. Then objectives. Then AIDS activities. Now can you see competency-based? That particular SDG activity highlighted the competency. Right. So if anybody asks, did you do a competency based teaching? We can say this is on competency. Then you can see the MIs and SDGs. OK, next we'll go and you can see over there photographs have been put to show. They have to think upon this. Right here again, you have we'll have to go deeply into it, but we don't have time. But I can discuss with you later on. Similarly, now we come to VUCA. Can you see the VUCA video? So I'll give you an example for heat and energy. The video that they see, one of the videos, there are two, three videos in this, is a bird hanging on a wire. Have you, we used to see when we were small, even now sometimes, like if you come to Gurgaon, you find, won't find wires. They're all underground. Okay. But some cities, like even in your city, the wires are there. And sometimes you see dead birds on those wires. So this is that video. And children have to solve how you can, because it's heat and energy, what all you can do so that the birds or the animals don't get killed. Okay, so this is the design thinking part. We call it VUCA, but it's design thinking. Then similarly, we have the goals. You can see all the goals that it's based on, right? Is it so tough to do? Can you plan it in your school also? 
so this is how and of course they used to give a, give us evidence they give us evidence like this the teachers like how they taught what all they used these are the teaching aids this is english uh, this i don't know any of you attended this this is by cbsc the english class i only taught in that it was with azim premji foundation so this is about road less traveled you know that poem right road not taken road less traveled in and the sdgs that we covered that how the uh, it has become dirty the woods have become dirty okay after they do the poetry this is they have to solve this and these are the worksheets i'll tell you about crab worksheet after this but not now because i have to say thank you to you ladies and gentlemen it is very important for you to remember there's a reason why we are doing design thinking and that is because creativity is the apex of the bloom's taxonomy and that is what is true teaching and learning if we don't tell our children what it is then they will never understand they may do it sporadically when they go off to an a university to a university or maybe abroad or somewhere but we have to lay the base for design thinking i often say this that there is a reason why some of our universities and sir gets angry with me but sir that with all due respect to everybody who's from iit and my own spouses also from iit but there is a lot more creativity required in our country for us to be ranked in the top 100 in the world why top 100 why not top 10 let's we at the foundation level start it and the iits will make sure that it grows and becomes a huge banyan tree thank you for listening to me thank you so much thank you rupa ma'am um, we are all in the middle of a very exciting and engaging sessions where we are learning to balance between the left brain and the right brain we are juggling between the lots and the hots and while presenting our unique thoughts and creative ideas let us welcome um, shri k rishrinivasan regional officer cbsc bhubneshwar zone welcome sir i would request uh, shri nilakantha panigrahi sir director sai international education group to please address and welcome sir so good afternoon to all of you i know that i'll not be in between your lunch and uh, this uh, learning time so i'll not take much of this uh, time because since morning either i was here in physical or in virtual through this uh, youtube you know that okay nowadays uh, it's possible even if you are not physically being present so you can learn if you have that knack of learning so that okay also and uh, thanks to uh, uh, mr srinivasan sir so the regional officer cbsc bhubaneswar he has reminded me today morning that okay can you make it uh, it's a live session through this uh, youtube so that okay he will also uh, learn and simultaneously the other people those who have unable to reach out to here and some of the people those who have uh, also called me in morning and try to enroll themselves so but be, because of this uh, space constraint i could not able to allow them or okay given them positive uh, aspect of us uh, like uh, attending this one so i thought that quickly i thought that okay uh, is, is there possibility so i have called my team and uh, they have designed these things okay for all the across so that's a good thing so it is it's a within 5 to 10 minutes they have done it uh thank you to uh, professor ravi uh, puvey sir and uh, he is uh, from idc school of designing iit mumbai and uh, he is this so uh, i'll tell the chairman as well as the the uh, think tank of this design thinking and innovation sir thank you to have here 
and uh, thank you to rupa chakravarti ma'am to have a good session so i could also enjoy that one and uh, that's right and i think okay all of you might have been enjoyed this one so see one thing is that uh, sometimes the workshop goes very monotonous like okay, people are talking and presenting but i am very happy to see that okay it's a interactive session is going on so a lot of you many of you are participating in this interaction simultaneously i'll also expect that all of the okay the last or the people those who are there all this 90 plus uh, the i will tell that uh, the learned persons those who are here the educators those who are here should also interact because if we can learn then we'll be make or felicitate or facilitate the children to learn this is the a uh, topic or this uh, subject which you are going to be introduced in the school so before that you all need to be understand how to introduce so that's right that's why cbse has done this workshop for all of us and thanks to uh, dr saha biswai saha as well as uh, uh, mr rp singh so who has uh, keen to do it uh, within a short span of time here in uh, our school Simultaneously, thanks to Pooja Rawat, ma'am, and uh, she has also took a lot of pain to finalize within the 10 days with Madhu Chanda. Uh, and okay, they have actually designed, they have designed, I'm telling, they have designed this uh, workshop for this uh, 100, okay, the participants. So thank you to all of you. Yes, okay, this will be followed by our lunch. For lunch, okay, my team, those who are here, they will be guide you that where is this uh, the lunch hall but be very specific that okay this school is only for primary children so you will find all this uh, the furnitures will be very very okay small and okay you have to adjust for that so thank you to all of you Hello. Yeah, I have one announcement. Afternoon, we are going to do the toy workshop, toy design workshop. Okay, so uh, you know I've I've kept a bunch here, so you take a number from this one of the chits you pay, so it will tell you which table you are allotted to. Okay, and we'll put the numbers on the table, so when you come back from lunch, you sit at those tables and form what we call as a very collaborative and cooperative team you know, in solve, trying to solve this problem. Okay, so we'll tell you how to go about it. Okay, so that's the afternoon session. This I'm keeping it here. So when you go for lunch, just pick up one of these chips. It's a 20 minute uh, lunchtime break. And then 20 minutes. Uh, I know it's a difficult for within 10 20 minutes you will take the lunch so the reporting time is 150 in my watch it is showing it's a 106 uh, and uh, 150 will be the reporting time so please be there to this time strictly okay
So there are six to a table. Okay, so if you don't have enough chairs, just pull it up. Good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> Nine people. Good afternoon to all of you. Hope you might have been a good lunch. I'm sorry, actually, I have told you that uh, the sitting arrangement might be for the young kids, though you might have been faced some certain problem in uh, taking the lunch. But uh, hope that okay, the menu might be liked by you. 
and uh, th thank you. And uh, uh, also, I'll thank to the people those who have given the suggestion for covering that uh, the uh, dustbin, and it has been taken care of. I hope okay, all of you might have been seen. That's good. Thank you. Because I was expecting many more, so I have okay taken my pad and to write down, but uh, hardly somebody has said. Only one I got it. You see, the things which are not been noticed by me or my team might have been noticed by the outsiders or okay the third party or a third observant. Then it's better. So even if you are finding something before going, you let me know about. Okay. Uh, again, welcome back. I know that it's a quite difficult task to retain and to keep the people active after your post lunch. And that's why Professor Ravi and uh, uh, Dr. Ajanta Sen, see, they have okay designed, I'll tell that they have designed some of the activities with toys. So I understand that, okay, that will be key for all of you uh, active as well as, okay, in this session as a live session, okay? So without further time, okay, to be wasted and to the, the, that, okay, further we, I'll be hand over to Dr. Professor Ravi and uh, Dr. Ajanta Sen. So to have, take off this uh, session, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Principal Sir. You know, the first big problem in class six, the students will solve. If you look at the task book, it's module number four. Uh, the students have to identify problems around their school. You know, they have to talk to the watchmen, to the, you know, to the teacher, to all the staff to see what their perception is. Also go around the school and note it down what the issues are. Then, of course, put on their thinking hats and come out with solutions and make a presentation to the principal at the end of the class. You know, so, th so that's the first problem. So one of the key things is that that I think he mentioned we were sitting down, right? I think the advantage of that is that then you're going to look at it from a child's point of view, right? Okay, so now it's this is a uh, task which is given in class 12. It comes under the games and toy design module, okay? Especially in the toy, we've asked the students to design a toy which will explain a concept from any topic, okay? So they should be very innovative and in actually, you know, thinking of this concept and doing it, okay? So we'll do it, you know, two, three ones. Now, what we've done is that we did a chit kind of thing, you know, so that we are mixed up together. Okay, so one of the reasons is that it's also found in the industry that if people from different backgrounds get together, the creativity increases, you know. So typically what they do is they'll get somebody from technology, somebody from design, somebody from marketing. They all sit together and try to solve a problem. And the richness of that solution is much better than what it is. So even in your school, right, even if you have children, you can mix genders. You can also mix probably, you know, different, you know, if it is everybody is from Orissa, you can mix up from different taluks together. You know, it's find reasons to mix up students, you know, and that will form a very nice group. Even when the students work together, uh, you have to bear two things in mind. One is that there is no leader. So th this is not a, you know, competition between the participants. It's actually a cooperation between the participants. Okay, so one has to collaborate with each other. And you think that you're part of a team. Ultimately, if you, you can also tell them, this is how you might be setting up an industry, let's say. So you're all partners in this. So all of you have to contribute together. Okay, so you cooperate, collaborate, and try to solve the problem. Okay, so these are some simple ground rules you know, before we start the problem. So let me put the problem.
how do you place? So, yeah, from here you can. Yeah. So the brief is very simple. Design an innovative toy. It has to be innovative, okay? So there has to be something new in the toy that you design, okay? So it's not a replacement of an old toy, but there is something, some contribution you do where uh, innovation comes in. All of us know what innovation is, right? Okay, and uh, we also know what a toy is. What is a toy? Makes children to play. Any other definition of toy? Okay, so somebody says that you can learn from it. Anything else for a toy? Make them happy so it's very playful. You play with the toy. Okay, so what we are trying to do is that you learn something while playing it. There are many toys where you just play for the fun of it. You probably don't learn. But we've given you a slightly larger challenge, you know, that you, you have to play, but at the same time while playing, you learn something. Okay, so that's the thing. Okay, so, and you have to be able to demonstrate it. Okay, so you're six. Okay, so think of what are good communication methods of, you know, presenting the final solution that you have. You can use storytelling methods. Think whatever means to make it enriching. Because let's say we are all the audience and you have to come and present it, present it also in a very interesting manner. Okay, so the exercise is very simple. So we'll not take two hours because we have too many groups here. So we'll spend about one and a half hours in designing the toy, okay? We'll come table to table, just see, okay? Uh, how you're doing it and we'll follow the design process, okay? So you've given a subject, you have to choose a subject now, right? Because there are many subjects. So maybe you can do a brainstorming on which subject to choose, right? Uh, all of you know what is brainstorming? How many know? What is brainstorming? <clears throat> okay, so Ajanta, you, yeah. So we'll, we'll explain what exactly is brainstorming. Uh, again, there's another concept, mind mapping. So all of you know mind mapping? How many know mind mapping? Okay, that's quite a few. But again, we'll explain what is exactly mind mapping, okay? So these are very simple tools. If you get ideas, how to put it in a framework. You know, how to actually connect one idea to another, you know. Uh, it's very nice as a group activity you can do. You can do it for any subject, okay. You just sit around and if you can do a mind map or a brainstorming, okay. It, everybody contributes towards that and it becomes a very nice exercise, okay. So the first thing you'll do is it either you do mind map or brainstorming or you can do both of them. So that's the first thing. Then you have to ideate. What are the concepts that you can come out with? Okay. And then we are going to give you all kinds of materials that you can choose from. Uh, you'll have to prototype it. Okay. Make a prototype of it. Okay. And then put a narrative behind it to uh, make a presentation at the end of it. Okay. So let me do some more things. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So because toys, right? So I'm just introducing few people from our own country who have been very instrumental in, you know, thinking about toys, okay? Uh, Professor Sudarshan Kanna was a faculty at the National Institute of Design. He took this task of going around the country and documenting what are Indian toys, okay? So he's produced some five books on it, okay? So that's a very good resource of what is Indian? Indian toys are very cultural and very ancient. You know, if you remember Harappa Mahanjadaro, they actually found toys, they clay toys. It's as old as that. You know, the tradition of toys in our culture. This is something we don't know of, right? We normally don't think of it, you know, as toys is very recent and it has come after industrialization, but actually toys are very, very ancient. Even in fact, many games like chess, for example, is, was invented in India right? Uh, so are parts of the marble game, which is actually invented in India. And chess itself has so many variations within the Indian context. Okay, so these are all Indian contributions. The other person is uh, Professor Arvind Gupta. <clears throat> he was an engineer 
and she got into this whole movement of trying to produce toys out of trash. Okay, so if you go to arvidgupta.com, you'll find, uh, you know, thousands of uh, examples of toys from trash. Okay, and he used to conduct workshops with children and it used to be so exciting just to put together a toy, you know, from waste materials and explain a concept of science, you know. So that's also very nicely documented. The third person is a scientist who was at TIFR and he went out and uh, formed an association where he said that if I can actually make children play and learn mathematics, nothing like it. Okay, so he has conceived of something called as a maths lab which is implemented in around 6,000 schools in our country and also parts of Africa, where children from the whole primary school, they just learn by playing. You know, there are no textbooks, nothing, and they learn the concepts of maths, okay? So they are part of the movement. <clears throat> and we know this process, right? You need to do the observation. You need to understand what the problem you're trying to solve. You have to ideate. We are going to do a prototype. And then reflection is our presentation here. You know, you'll probably get feedback and you'll get evaluated by another group. Okay, so that's the process, okay? So just introducing mind mapping. Ajantai, do you want to come and see it or later? Okay, so I'm just going to explain the, you know, basic principles of mind mapping. Okay, so I'll bring the slide later, mind mapping and brainstorming. <clears throat> okay, so there are four types of toys. Okay, one is cognitive toys, okay, so where you have to use your mental, you know, uh, method in actually understanding or playing it, you know. There are physical toys where you move around and play, right, like, like these. Then there are sensory toys which make some noise, you know, uh, which uses your sensories. And there are social toys which allow people to, you know, gather together. So you can think of toys in these four different with directions you know so let me show you some examples okay again i'm saying indian toys but there are numerous examples of indian toys and uh, if you go to a you know site called as dsos and type in indian toys you'll find the whole range of indian toys over there okay so these are cognitive toys all made in india jigsaw puzzles fit it in a box locking puzzles cube puzzles right interlocking puzzles, shape sorters, uh, Rubik's cube itself is something like that or the logical toys. So these are cognitive. You need your analytical skills to solve problems using this. And you learn a concept, you know, at the end of it. <clears throat> Physical toys, you know, you spin, you construct together. Okay, like a Lego is a, you know, physical toy or wheel toy, you run around. Okay, dexterity toys right? String toys and mystery toys, right? So all of them fit into somewhere, you know, you have to put it in together, okay? Sensory toys are these, like playing with clay, a balance board, a rattle, a whistle, right? Which uses your different sensory to come up with toys. Again, some more examples of sensory toys. These produce some kind of music, okay? Then we have social toys, uh, which allows children to role play, you know, and typically you'll have kitchen set or a doctor set or a dolls and puppets to have the social toys. Okay, so this is yours. So I'm going to take a break. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Ajinta Sen to, you know, speak to you. So we're going to do a very small introduction. Okay. So Dr. Ajinta Sen uh, is the director of Jello Labs. Uh, Jello Labs has a product for, you know, children who cannot speak. Okay, so she's been doing this project for the last, I think, uh, seven, eight years, you know, and uh, okay, so that's one of the thing. Otherwise, she's an adjunct faculty at many of the IITs. Okay, she also set up a, you know, uh, technology lab in the, in Singapore at uh, NTU. So these are some of the, you know, uh, projects that she has done and she's very passionately involved with children uh, almost for 30 years she's been working with children you know doing workshops and uh, asking them to do things even across countries you know in the late uh, 
90s, we are, she had a project where children from Mumbai connected with children from UK. And, you know, online they work together. These were all very early experimental, you know, uh, things. Okay. So over to you, Ajanta. Good afternoon, everybody. It's as uh, uh, Mr. Panigrahi mentioned, it's always a challenge post lunch to keep people engaged. So um, we are here to also problem solve. So I'll take that as a problem solving for you by, uh, you know, uh, by by doing it in a way that doesn't put you to sleep. Uh, a special uh, uh, note of thanks for uh, Principal Panigrahi for organizing this session and uh, for being a part of the innovation cell ecosystem because uh, today we are actually faced with a, a, a great challenge with uh, how to groom our children. And uh, we live in a society where uh, children, teachers, and the young are undermined in favor of older people, right? So big institutions, big people, big names are what we celebrate. But we forget about children and, we for and even more so we forget about our teachers. And uh, this um, uh, this uh, neglect has happened across the last uh, so many years, right? Uh, if, if you were to take the independence, uh, the year of independence as a benchmark, then certainly uh, it has happened through that, where uh, no governance model has said that first we will, we had the five year planning, right? No one said first we uplift education and children and teachers because that's the bedrock. So. Today, we have a broken bedrock, and we have uh, four um, strength, uh, passionate teachers like you, who might have actually joined other sectors, but have remained as teachers. And uh, through our design thinking uh, rounds that we've made across the different cities, we are uh, simply amazed to see the way you're able to put thoughts together. And you obviously think like children. You have great empathy for them. And so today is your day. And uh, we do it with great regard and respect and honor for the teachers and the principals who are present here. I have to tell you that after all these years of teaching, uh, uh, what we think are challenging, uh, you know, a, a challenging task of teaching students from IIT, and I've spent a lot of time teaching students from IIT Bombay because I was also a st uh, student there, so I knew their mindset. But I'll tell you, just because you are uh, good at teaching at IIT, is no guarantee you will be able to teach children. Let me tell you, it could be a complete failure at teaching children. So what you have today is a treasure and please hold on to it. And uh, it's our task to actually celebrate that. So uh, I will actually uh, start with a, a, a question. And, you know, basically I'll address this idea. You know, we talk a lot about uh, design thinking and we're talking a lot about uh, children how to make children do things. Why uh, suddenly are we asking that question? Part of it is, of course, because we paid no attention to our schooling system and children in the way that children learn best. We haven't done that, right? Uh, but, uh, well, we haven't done that for 70 years. Why have we started asking now is a question. Uh, and I, because for, for lack of time, I can't make it an interactive session, but I will just fill in with some, uh, you know, uh, some snippets here, which is that, um, is it that uh, children have changed a lot and that's why we need to address them differently? Or is it that adults have changed? Is it that adults created a playing field that children never understood and adults are beginning to understand that that playing field needs to be leveled? So it is actually not children who've changed one bit. Children are children anywhere in the world at any stage of their growing up. This much is clear. This much is clear across all studies. What has changed and what was actually the process of abuse was actually adults because we abused a process uh, without probably knowing it because we were thrown into a system. That is a different matter, I won't get into it, but basically adults have changed. Now this interest in how to actually now, first recognizing that there's something deficient and moving towards children has kind of happened in the last 25 years and uh, uh, spurred, I have to say, not by our own understanding, but by uh, scientists. And it's basically scientists who've done it, a uh, very eminent scientist uh, from uh, MIT, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, 
Seymour Papert, you might just want to go back and look him up. Papert, P-A-P-P-E-R-T. He's in his 90s today, late 80s. We've been trying to get him to India and we might be able to. Seymour Papert tried to actually uh, understand how he can build computing for children. And he thought of it in the 80s. And he not only thought of that in the 80s, so early on when computing was still mainframe and it, it hadn't yet become personal computing, it just, uh, just about become personal computing, but he had also thought how to make children from poor families do it, you know? So that is like a father of, um, you know, uh, the children's world and children, you know, world of learning for children. Uh, the other person that I would like to bring in is a person who we have had the great opportunity to meet with. We invited him to come to India to IIT Bombay for a, a Designing for Children conference, international conference. Chris Crawford, that's the other name you'd like to put down. He was actually, uh, uh, he was actually featured as Man of the Year by Time magazine in somewhere around 98 or 99 or I think 2000. And Chris Crawford is the person who recognized he is from the gaming industry, from Atari. He was the person who's built most of the Atari assets way back in the 70s and 80s, the father of gaming, uh, not that as old as uh, uh, Seymour Papert, but it was Chris Crawford who brought into the idea of computing, uh, the, in, into the sector of computing, the idea that computing is not enough by simply tapping away at keys. Computing, the real understanding of computing requires you to understand your sensory abilities, which is what are seeing, hearing, uh, smelling, um, touching, and uh, you know whatever I've left out. And uh, you have a category called sensory toys, right? And sensory is something that is a universal feature. All of us feel, all of us touch, all of us see, all of us hear, and all of us uh, taste, taste, smell, right? So. That means that you have a great opportunity here where you actually start with something everyone does around the world, it's universal, and children do, and children enjoy doing it. So what is a good place to start with understanding our children? It's actually sensory. And this awareness was brought in by Chris Crawford who tried building this idea of sensory into computing. We don't have the time for that, but I just wanted to introduce two of these great people okay and you because i know you're very curious minded folks you will want to go back and take a look and uh, 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 you will also find other names in the process uh, so having said that and having brought in this you know uh, tickled you with the idea that it is actually not children who've changed it's adults who've changed what is that what did that change bring about thanks to those like papper thanks to those like uh, uh, Crawford, and because they were working in the computing and technology sectors, it brought in attention. Otherwise, it would have been lying in the dust somewhere, right? So they brought in this uh, understanding that we need to change and do it the way children do. And uh, backed by studies in this area by another name that you would just want to write down called Piaget, Jean Piaget, uh, who you may already know about. Uh, they one thing became clear that children, how do children learn? Very simply, children learn by observing and what they observe becomes their information kitty. And the way that information kitty builds is how they construct information from the environment in terms of what they observe. Nothing less, nothing more. It is what they will observe is what will become their information, which means what they don't observe is your point of contention here. If they don't observe something, don't try pushing it down their throats. It is what they observe. So that, that's why contextual information becomes very important. And then you have textbooks where you say, we are in a tropical country and you have a picture of a child with a coat from the West because it looks like a good looking kid or a whatever. And then the child is like, that doesn't make sense. And actually we are at fault for not bridging that gap, right? And so we are constantly, the bringing information to children where there's a very big information gap which we don't bridge okay okay coming back to what we really need to do so this form this much is now clear at least this uh understanding has dawned in in the last 25 years um chris crawford's work was in the early 90s so across the last 25 30 years that children uh learn by observing and uh, children what they observe becomes the information because they construct information from the environment the other uh, 
the other very important information uh, uh, understanding is that children learn through playing. Because you see, when children are infants, right from the time they are born into a uh, toddler, into young days, most of the time what they like to do is what? Play, right? That's what they like to do. And we think that they're wasting time playing. Actually, when they're playing, they're constantly constructing information that gets into the head. They're able to understand that information. So why not take that information and build our uh, learning for children with that information, okay? All right. So what is that information, okay? Um, that information actually is far more uh, systematically understood by children than by adults. Uh, we have uh, we have not learned to actually build information systematically. You know, when we pick up something, not through observation, through books, our whole intention is how much can I gather? I have ten books, you have five books, so I know more, right? So the information processing and the information sources are very different for adults, and the markups are how much more can I know? But it is not how much more; it is what do I know that. Is, needs to be understood. That is what children focus on. All right. So the first thing here, so there are three principles that we need to understand. One is that it has been, uh, so it has been now first proven that constructivism is the way ahead. It's called constructivism, the particular theoretical point. And I think uh, slowly, if you read up some of these people, uh, Jay Krishnamurti from our country, Rabindranath Tagore, uh, uh, Montessori, they were all constructivists. Uh, if, if you go to Shantiniketan, the way even higher learning is done is through con constructivist understanding. They will go to a Santhal village and they will dance with the Santhalis and they will try to understand what does that rhythm mean. And then they'll go back to understand cognitively and theoretically what does that mean. You know, so they will first go observe the Kopai River, the flora, the fauna. Uh, even within Shantiniketan, uh, classes are held around uh, trees, you know, the great uh, banyan tree, the ecosystem of it, et cetera. Um, so the air, the breathe, et cetera. So it, it, for example, a, a very great uh, festival for them is actually not Durga Puja and all that, it's Holi, right? And during Holi, they will all dress up and they will all play because it's a very sensory uh, uh, experience. And it goes back down to the idea of learning that sensory is the way up. What does that tell you when you do Holi, play of Holi in a university? It tells you that the best way ahead is through sensory and not just for children. It's also for adults. That we shifted from sensory to entirely cognitive is started 5,000 years ago when we discovered writing. And uh, remember that writing was never disco discovered to store information. Writing was discovered to make calculations. Traders needed to know a way to put down things. We think it's to store information. Along the way, we stored information. And then what we did not do across 10, almost 100,000 years to 5,000 years ago, which is remember everything, observe, learn, and remember. We outsourced it to writing. And then 500 years ago, we outsourced it to a very scaled up version of printing. And then 200 years ago, and now about 50 years ago, we've done it to computing. And now 20 years ago, we've done it to Google. So we don't even remember the number of our parents or our children anymore. The phone is lost, we are lost right? That is a stage where we have reached, okay? So it is very, very far from observing, constructing information, remembering, and applying, okay? We have moved very, very far from that. And Google search is like a instrument. It should be an instrument of hate for everybody when you're trying to learn something, okay? When you're lost, and lost somewhere, even there, it'll show you wrong information a lot of times. But never mind that. So the first principle we have to understand in terms of children is that what they do is to observe, as I said, and uh, in that, it, what they're led by is natural curiosity. And very importantly, they will actually observe more than parent, uh, uh, adults do, okay? So because a lot, we have lost our ability to observe, so we observe less, children observe more. So obviously children will observe more than parents and adults will do. And that creates an information gap. It means that they have more information than actually we have. This is the first thing to remember. In that, for example, I'm, in that they will start asking questions. You know, you get bugged when your little kid keeps on asking questions, you've got so many chores to fill. Those questions are actually what we need to hang on to. 
So they will first ask, so they'll see a line of ants. And the first question they will ask is, what is the ant doing, chiti? What is the chiti doing? Okay. So the mother will say, where is it? I mean, what is the chiti doing? Just moving, moving all day long. Why? What, what is it doing? So the mother will say, you know, the rains are going to come. So they're uh, storing food. Okay. That's a good explanation. A great explanation. It's another matter that you can't see where they're storing food. So the child is like, I don't understand. But okay, my mother is saying, I'll take it for granted. But I do understand that when I get hungry, Chiti gets hungry, Chiti needs to store food. That much is clear. The next question is, why? Why is the Chiti in our line? Do we ever answer that question for children? We don't, right? We don't have the time and we think, we just say anything. Now, Chiti walking in a line is actually a very complex, uh, 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 complex uh, domain of understanding. And uh, many years, you know, some years ago, um, uh, I think it was in the, uh, I, I think it was in the 50s or 60s, a Nobel laureate called uh, Feynman, Richard Feynman, who was part of the nuclear bomb, the Manhattan Project. He was at the Princeton, and Feynman says in his book, a lovely book he had written. Uh, it was it was called Pleading for a Satiety. Uh, what do you, I'll remember the name. Something, Mr. Feynman, I'll remember the name and you will love to read that book. It's a story, it's like a storybook. Uh, Richard Feynman was in Princeton. One cold morning in Princeton is in New Jersey. It's very cold out there. One cold morning sitting in his room and he finds these cheaties, you know, these ants and they have these large windows, right? So it go all the way like that and then it comes down and then he follows and then he finds it coming out of somewhere. And Feynman, with all his physics knowledge, and I think he had al already won the Nobel or he was about to win the Nobel, he was like, I have to figure out why the ants wa walk in a line. He asked a question which he did not get to ask when he was a kid. And when the kid asks a question, we don't answer. Basically, they walk in a line for two reasons. Because you'll see that when they walk in a line, if you break it, they will join up. And when the other group comes, they're coordinated. But it'll never be more than one line, okay? They do that for optimization reasons. And they do it through great social ability. They cooperate fully. And uh, Bill Gates once said, if we, he was asked, what is his greatest inspiration from the world outside of computing? He had said, if we had learned to do things the way ants do, that is cooperative, we would have been better people. We would have done things better. Okay, so the next question is why? And we are not able to answer that, right? Okay, so as teachers, I'm sure you're already doing this. I'm simply pinpointing some of the principles. The next thing to remember, so in other words, it is very important to leverage the curiosity children have rather than brushing aside the curiosity. It could mean that you don't know what the child is asking for. You go find out and you tell the child. But never assume that you know and the child is asking a useless question. So it's it's important to leverage that curiosity, not ignore it. Second thing, the second thing is information around is all very chaotic and disordered. Okay? And children know how to bring order to disorder. They know that actually. What we do is we make it complicated for them because we don't know how to make information order. So let me give you an example. Uh, they, okay, so they, they, they bring in this order to disorder by actually filling in the gaps of information, okay? So they will say they've been taught that uh, ducks, uh, elephant walks on land and ducks sail in water, right? Very early on. So they'll see a lineup of ducks and uh, of course there's no pond. So they will draw a pond because the missing information is water body. And they will actually go ahead and they will draw it. Adults will wait for your permission. The child will go and draw the pond and say that if you told me ducks are in water, there has to be a pond somewhere. That means the next question after what and why is where. Where is it? I want to know, where is that pond? Why are you showing me ducks and there's no pond? So the child actually fills the pond through what? The first po point was curiosity we have to take care of. Secondly is imagination. The child through its imagination has actually drawn a pond. And that imagination takes on two forms, which is what today all design mavens in the industry are talking about, which is what? Visualization and making. 
Okay, so they do it through two things, through visualization and making. And so you go to the garden, the child is playing there, maybe with other friends, maybe alone. The, a lot of leaves, etc., have fallen. And there is, um, there is um, you know, a lot of twigs and all, dry twigs. And the child has done something with that. And the mother is like, why are you dirtying yourself? Pray, please come back and clean up. Okay, And she just walks up and everything she or he had done is gone. And the child says, do you not see that I have built a rocket? That's a rocket, you know, because there are twigs, there are leaves. The child has actually made a rocket. And for us, it's nothing, right? We don't need expensive material for the child to make. The child visualizes in its imagination and goes and makes. So visualization and making are two uh, partner activities that need to be done, which is what we're going to do today. But we've taken off making from our school. We don't have any more making. At least we used to do some crafts work. We used to do all that. There's no making, nothing. It's gone. Okay? So we made it very cognitive. The third thing we, we then would like to uh, bring in here is that if they know to pick up information from the environment, if they know to fill in information through their curiosity, so they know to construct, they use curiosity as a mechanism, and if they know to order that information, how do they order that information? If you can understand that, then your job is done. Because the way we order things and they order things is 360 degrees different. And the way we are trying to pass on information to that is in our way of ordering things rather than in their way of ordering things. Okay? In, and I will tell you what the difference is. Uh, now, I, the reason I uh, requested for this to stay is, uh, you will, it will become clearer to you. Uh, I did say that at some point in time, we had these interventions, which is fantastic for civilization, human history, that we pick up writing, we pick up all of the things. Now, tell me, because we write, have we stopped telling stories? Have we? Have we stopped telling stories because we can write? We haven't. Have we stopped speaking because we write? No, it is even more important today to understand how, how, how crucial it is to pass on information through storytelling because you have, again, mavens from the industry are talking about storytelling. Everywhere you go, CNN will say, we do storytelling. You go to the scientific community, we do storytelling. It is the domain of children. They do storytelling. We are not paying attention to that. We are worried about taking information from the information maven. We do storytelling. Let's forget about that. Let's say, once upon a time, both children and adults did storytelling because both children and adults did observation. At some point in time, we stopped observing and putting them together as storytelling. We need to go back to our roots. Now, the first thing that we did was actually understand information through sensory. When a child is born, we decorate the crib with a lot of things, right? We have uh, things that you can play and we think that will keep the child you know, uh, engage with the sound and then colorful things and all that. Believe me, none of that sensory is of any use. The only sensory that the child understands when the child comes out of the mother's womb, the first one is what? What are the five sensories? Touch. Okay. Okay. Touch. But even more primeval than that, so, so warmth and touch, right? Which means that let's say the mother has died. Does that, is that touch enough for the child? The child will keep crying. Why? Because the child knows it's not the mother. How? Which, which of the five sensory the child picks up first from the womb? Keeps, retains. Yes, smell, smell. So when the mother goes to take a bath, like I know that, the child will start crying. The child knows the moment you exit the room, when you enter the room, the child knows mother is there or not there. Dogs are like that. Animals are like that. Children are like animals. It's better to recognize that, okay? Secondly is taste. The second thing is taste because the child has to sustain itself. Third is touch. Only then you have not even visual. You have hearing. Finally, you have visual. And then we do our crib with colorful toys and rattles and all that. No use. It's better to understand how we actually absorb these things. It also means that some of these things, we are very quick to make, make disappear. 
So we say, uh, don't keep sucking on your toys, you know? Don't keep doing this, don't keep doing that because you have to be cognitive like me. I am not sucking at my toy, you know? I am looking at my uh, computer screen. And so we build a world that we want the child to become part of, and it is an erroneous way, right? So the first thing we need to understand is sensory toys. A very basic, basic of, basis of learning is sensory. The second basis of learning out of these is which one? Which one? Physical, physical. Because a child, even if the child is alone in the crib, the child will go playing with something. Give the child a rattle, it will go playing. Doesn't need anybody, it will play, right? Second thing is physical. Third thing is what? Social. Third is social. Third is social where you need one another to construct things, okay? Social is more important than we choose to think it is. And please understand that both adults and uh, children have not, like we, we think we've done away with sensory and physical, but we've not done away with social because they say that when a calf comes out of the cows, uh, from the cow, the calf gets up and it's ready for the world. This, uh, human baby comes out, it requires nine months. And it requires a whole village to help the mother. That's how we became social. It's one of our very, very early instincts to be social. And therefore, that is an instinct we have not dropped. Even from our education system, we have not dropped. We still have children play together. We still have teachers sit together and understand how to solve a problem. So it is good to leverage that property and it's good to bring back physical and sensory. Lastly is cognitive. Cognitive is where you use what goes on in your head not your hands, not your smell, not your touch, not your empathy for each other, but what's going on in your head and that analytical process. So when children learn, order their information, they do it by through sensory and physical and to some extent social. Example, there is a storm brewing, let's say, okay? So the it happened when we were doing our, our, our design workshop in one of the cities and the meteorological department had said there's going to be a, a what a grade three grade grade two storm like a very very dangerous storm and so what will the nowadays you have it you know they'll tell you in the newspaper or you know on your uh, google etc so uh, parents will tell children of course the school will be shut uh, and children are like oh good i can play at home there's no sign of storm yet but for children it's great parents will say now you don't step out because when a storm happens, uh, you know, things fall on your head and all, please don't step out. You'll get wet, you'll fall in, you'll get injured, etc. So the child is like, everything looks fine. I don't think there's a storm. I think my mother is wrong. Okay. But then the mother, so the child says, I want to go out. The mother says, no. So the child will say, you know what? It's not like when a storm happens and things start falling and we get injured. It's not like that. It's more like when you, because the trees start, you know, swaying and the twigs fall, etc. So the mother says, you should not do it. The child says, no, 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 you're wrong. Actually, when the tree sways, there'll be a storm. Otherwise, there's no storm. And the child is right or not. There is no storm yet. Even though the meteorological department has said there's a storm. For the child, there is no storm until what the child can observe is on the horizon, right? That manner of logic and explanation is different from how we do our explanation. So now let's show the theory. So I will just very quickly take you through what today the industry is also trying for us to understand, which is the cultural structure. So, so, uh, this one, right? yeah. So the first thing we need to understand is this, that uh, the way adults do and the way we do cognitively, cognitive means placing information in an order, in a vertical order, big to small, small to big. You know, we understand that very well. We're constantly trying to rearrange information as big to small, small to big. We need order in that information. We do it sequentially. We do it linearly. Whereas the way children order things in their head is where they try to find order. When they don't find order, they'll go back to observe. If they find some order, then they will come back. 
they don't find order, they will go back. So it's a loop process. And today the design industry is saying that the way design is done is to an iterative process, which is the looped order. Okay, the scientific community has understood that. In the 50s, the Danish scientific nuclear industry said uh, no less than the nuclear industry understood that problem solving for science, science is linear, problem solving for design and creativity is in a loop. So it is, it is also more messy because you're doing a bit, then you're going back to find solutions, then you go back. And then the whole thing can be very, very chaotic and disorderly, but you, there is a method in madness there. In, and that is, is what they call design thinking today. We've been calling it design process at IIT Bombay. Most schools around, design schools around the world have just called it design process. Design thinking is a new term and it's quite a buzz. So you don't worry about those terminologies, okay? The next thing is, like I said, that uh, vertical is classificatory and horizontal is fuzzy and chaotic. You have to stay on that zone, no matter how chaotic, we simply stay on the horizontal zone. Horizontal is where, uh, uh, horizontal is spatial, right? So horizontal is where children actually see missing dots, you know, they missing information that adults haven't told them. And then they try to join up the missing dots, joining the dots it's called. So that is what children are good at. That is what we used to be good at. And we gave up that, you know, over the centuries. And so today we have to understand how that is done. Uh, we then come to, and these are, of course, all interconnected. Yeah, uh, yeah. So the uh, uh, the first one, of course, like I said, is analytical. It's database. It's very specific. It's very exact. It has to be very specific. Otherwise, how will you make things in ascending or descending order? Whereas the other one is synthesis, which means that you say it like a story through narratives. And you just try, many times it's speculative. So I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know it's going to happen. And many times it's simply interpretive. Your way may not be my way. That's fine. That's totally fine for creativity. Uh, this is the cognitive process. Chess is a very cognitive game. Okay. And yet inside chess, I, I need to also for, also for you to understand that even though there are four categories of toys, they are interconnected. Chess has cognitive primarily, but it also has what out of the other three categories? Sensory, physical, social, what does chess have other than cognitive? Loud? It has physical. So when you, when you, you know, when you actually uh, do this, uh, you know, game up, you take the uh, coin and you go bang, right? That's physical, but it's not a social game. Chess is not a social game. And so chess is not a sensory game, okay? Uh, just to say that when you look at the other games, understand that the games are also phenomenal. So cognitive versus intuitive process. Intuitive process, very simply, is where you simply know. How do you simply know? Because it's come through your DNA. So we, as a culture, are very good with intuitive, and we are trying to give that up, okay? For example, in sustainability, we don't know those terminologies. So even the word sustainability is new to us, but we do know something. When we leave the house and we've come out of the bathroom and the tap goes tip, 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 right? The grandmother, your mother will get very irritated. The grandmother will say, go shut it. Don't leave without making sure it's shut. Now, that is an intuitive. So the grandmother will say, it's a Lakshmi. You know, you are actually inviting trouble. What is that trouble? The trouble is that we're losing water. Scarcity, right? So it's told as a story, the Alakshmi part is a story and the knowledge is intuitive. So uh, you are actually in a culture where you can take help of your intuitive understanding, forget the books. So constructivist, children, curiosity, imagination, visualization, making, instinctive and intuitive. These are all things we're actually very comfortable with, right? So today, uh, and then, of course, we talk about the process where, where we won't really get into it too much because there's not much time. But when we talk about uh, mind mapping and uh, brainstorming, the first thing you do is actually brainstorming. So today, when you start your work, which is what we're going to do now, your problem has been given, which is to make a toy that is innovative, that means new, and which somehow explains uh, something from the learning world, right? So 
the first, now you've been given a very nice uh, tip off to begin with, which is the four types of toys. And to that, I've added the fact that these four toys doesn't mean cognitive doesn't have other possibilities, doesn't mean sensory doesn't have other possibilities. You can actually, first you actually figure out what problem you want to solve. And then you can figure out what toy, what kind of toy you would like to have, okay? So the first thing is, what is that you need to problem solve? And for that, you do brainstorming. You're in a group of six. All of you sit and say, you know what? My, my children don't seem to understand a theory of gravity. And e equal to mc square falls flat. Is there a way I can bring that down to a set of toys? You brainstorm. And once you brainstorm, you put down what are the qualities of gravitation? You know, free fall, invisible, etc. And then you figure out your, that is the mind uh, brainstorming part. And then the brainstorming, you make connections, interconnections across the words you put down. And through that, you make a set of mind map where you bring relationship across those words. Now, uh, this is very inadequate uh, communication or whatever I'm doing because these require you know, hours and uh, days, but never mind, some idea I've given you. So you st your starting point is what problem you want to solve, not what toy you want to do. Do you understand that? First ask what problem, and you don't have to solve the world's problem. You take one simple, small thing. Remember, the best innovation is always something very simple and straightforward. You know, like the 3M made that sticky note, was it was for something else, that yellow sticky note. That was an innovation, a simple thing that sorted so many problems. Don't think of solving complex things. One little problem you identify and say, I will solve it. And you will find something new about it, okay? The next thing you do is you brainstorm, then you do mind mapping. And while doing that, you can figure out what do you think of the four categories, which, 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 uh, uh, you know, which capabilities I want to bring in would be the best for my problem solving. And always remember that sensory can have a combination of social, or sensory will certainly have physical, right? A lot of physical will have social, et cetera, et cetera. So we will start the problem solving today. We'll come from table to table, not right away. And one of the things that Professor Puvaya mentioned, which you probably don't have the time to do right now, but you can do it with your children that we do with our students at IITs, especially at IIT Bombay is that you form composite groups, which means men and women, gender, because women think in a certain way, men think in a certain way, right? It's very important to mix up gender. It's very important to mix up skills. Some are very good with visuals. Some are very good with analytical. So you mix up the two. You mix up engineering students with applied arts students, you know, and so on. And, uh, and the third thing is diversity. So you try and mix up children from different parts of the country because you know that Contextually, we bring in different, different things to bear. What people in Bengal do and Orissa do are very, very different from what people, let's say in a you know, state like Rajasthan will do. And it is when you bring in diversity, you actually widen your thought process. So the first thing is what problem you want to solve? Simple problem, okay? Take something very simple. And experientially, you know that your students are finding it difficult to solve that. Secondly, what kind of toys do you think would be uh, facilitating? And uh, then you will get on with your brainstorming mind mapping and build your thoughts. So uh, now you can start the process. Okay, so just a couple of words on this. Mind map is you have the idea in the center and you form branches. Like for example, if you say, you know, let's say physics, then what of physics will form branches. And in those branches, there'll be sub branches. So that's called mind mapping. And so so the root is the core of it. Yeah, and brainstorming is whatever comes to your mind, you put down as things, and then you make connections. Okay. So somewhere in the process, you can try both of them, but uh, uh, we're going back to the problem that we have here. Okay, so that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so you can ask for all the materials. I think we're going to distribute it. Okay, so right now it's somewhere around three o'clock till four o'clock. Okay, so 10 minutes to four, you know, again, I'll, I'll tell you. So now you put on your thinking hats and go ahead and do it. Okay. And then you have to also plan for a presentation. Each one of you will come and make a presentation here. 
okay and uh, whatever you think of you have to build it as a as a physical toy right out of the materials that we have here any questions any doubts hmm? it's okay
you know it can be for any class okay any class okay the toy should include two things learning as well as play that means education plus play right any any
uh, just trying to draw your attention to something uh, very practical, which is that uh, uh, the glue has been missed out. So we are trying to pick up one or two from the office and we'll pass it around. As soon as you finish, pass it to the other group, okay? And you can also use cello tape, okay? So is there a group that needs glue right away? I'll give it to them. So there'll be one or two glue that will make its rounds. Thank you. 
I'm 
actually make use of all that were given to us to create a toy, what could we possibly do? We came to a conclusion that we could make uh, some a toy that could uh, teach, that could address the problem of directions. So Shubendu sir will further tell us about the toy. Good evening, everyone. So we are basically trying to teach the students regarding, regarding the wind speed as well as the wind direction. We basically feel the air or the moving air, but uh, students don't get it from which direction to which direction the air is actually moving from. So we have created uh, whatever is being given to us using those components. We have made a wind vane as well as an anemometer. It is a mixture of a wind vane as well as an anemometer. So this can uh, help us in finding out the wind speed at what speed the wind is blowing. And this can show us the direction of your wind. And over here, we have placed a small disk over which we have marked some directions of the uh, our cardinal directions. So on which direction it is actually moving, it can be shown from this. Hello, silence, please. Please, if you're speaking, speak silently. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. 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 Sure. Just repeat. Yeah. So basically, we teach the students regarding wind and their wind speed as well as your wind directions. But uh, students generally don't uh, know that in which direction your wind is blowing from. We know that wind is a uh, moving air, but we don't know in which direction it is actually moving. So we have uh, created a mixture of a wind vane as well as a anemometer. So this represents an anemometer over here, wherein we have got four cups. Uh, over here in these cups, the air columns do enter and it, it makes it rotate. And this also gives us the wind speed. And over here, there is a wind vane, which actually gives the direction in which your wind is actually flowing. And to know in which direction we have placed our disc over here, over which there are, there are the directions being marked, so that students will all uh, easily know in which direction your wind is blowing, as well as they will also note the speed of your wind. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, that was a nice idea, very nice model also. Yeah. <clears throat> so over to group three. So now you can assess group group three. Huh? Oh, group one, yeah, group 15, yeah, okay. So, so group four, please listen to group three, okay? Hello. Yeah, go ahead. Louder, loud, please. Yeah. Fifteen. Yeah. Mm. Good evening, all. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, actually, hello. Hello. Good evening, everyone. As now it is uh, like the problem we have found out in the children is after school, they use mobile phone a lot and they don't uh, give attention to physical games and playing games together with siblings and uh, friends. So we have prepared this model a uh, toy. 
in which they are going to uh, like uh, they are they can sit after the school at home or somewhere outside they can sit with their friends and siblings and they can play together uh, moving around the things what to do and how to operate this service yeah good evening uh, this is dipti ranjan uh, so after uh, coming to school actually generally what happen nowadays children are playing with the mobile they spend uh, mobile with the tablet or uh, iphone or any uh, mobile simply they don't have any opportunity to play they do not have any kind of uh, things in older days if you see people, uh, children are going to playground and they play with their friends and then they go to shop they go to see the natures so uh, here we are just trying a very small thing to show uh, the demonstration so after coming to school uh, keep their bags at home uh, these are the children so they go to the playground so they play together with their friends and they play different kinds of games over here as you see there is a playground and there is a jhula also then after playing uh, they go to their well there is a well also they just want to see observe the natures how the water is coming from the ground and uh, then th there is a signs you can see and when they look at into the in nature you can see over their grounds and uh, trees over there birds were setting over there and then just they just spend their time with the friends and with the uh, nature after this they come to the shop so they buy something so they calculate uh, in their mind nowadays what happen children are doing lot of things in a writing so uh, we just try to create a environment where the child can calculate in their mind by using uh, the sensory organs <laughs> then the, yes they can uh, have money with them so they will take to the money go buy that the thing so now sir will uh, explain about the money and all good evening all of you good evening good evening okay today our today's topic is uh, money and money we you know when the money is added to the recreational activity it becomes more and more interesting say yes or no yes so here we are having we are representing or demonstrating a village or we can say that the nearby the town place where the people where the children they are playing with their siblings and after that they are going to the shopkeeper just to just to purchase something right and money why we have chosen the topic because money is something which adds people as well as which subtracts people also yes or no this is what so here they are going to learn about the money addition as well as subtraction side by side when they are purchasing something they have to share some some things to their friends to their siblings in this way they are going to develop some cultural activities also or cultural uh, uh social uh, so emotionally and social socially they are going to attract with one another so uh, our topic of the discussion is regarding this money how money connects the people and how money we can say that uh, it is connecting the entire world thank you thank you so much so over to group 4 thank you thank you so much hello 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 thank you good afternoon everyone we are here with three different kinds of toys so the problem that we were facing is we wanted to address students to help them classify words and numbers so initially to classify words and numbers we have designed we brainstormed a lot and we designed two spinning wheel kind of toys where they can classify numbers into prime composite or whole numbers which sir will be better uh, you know proficient to explain and for words we have given them various parts of speech and we created a spinning wheel kind of thing where they could classify the words into various categories 
also because we had science thank you ma'am science and social science uh, issues so we have taken up the environmental issues and we created paper doll paper cup dolls to create address the environmental issues and create a kind of awareness so we have ganga hi i am ganga i'm very happy today you know you want to see how irate mausam nadi ka kinara eternal hawa it's really i am very happy today you know why because there is no planet b it means what we are very lucky just imagine our universe is so large so large or so large there are a lot of planets even if stars also one two three i don't know how many even if i cannot count but just imagine till today we found only one planet only one planet that is our earth and we have why it is sustainable for us because we have water environment atmosphere proper perfect distance from the sun that's why we can maintain the temperature but what how we are treating with a mother planet and that's why we are facing a lot of environmental issues and my happiness is going to be you can you want to see how godavari will explain oh as ganga is saying she is worried because of so many environmental issues but her friend godavari is also worried why do you know about this yes nowadays the pollution raising day by day day by day and we are not finding solution so just try to be a part of stopping the solution find out the solution okay and don't make the earth dirty avoid polluting our environment then only we can save our earth and we can smile forever now let's talk to kaveri what she is thinking i am kaveri green is a trend sustainability a mindset so keep your environment clean yes so we will take a oath once we have to clean our we have to clean our we have to stop pollution we have to make our earth green yes just go with this oath and keep in your fire into various parts of speech thank you thank you very much thank you yeah so group 5 so group 6 will assess group 5 yeah yeah two was one yeah it's like that can keep somewhere i will start now yeah, yeah. i will take about five it is in the thinner mark okay uh good afternoon everyone once again uh we have basically tried to prepare a churning mill like uh, for class as our today's session is about 6 to or 8 to 9 10 12 onwards uh, sorry uh, within that the today's session it is talking about how to teach students so class 6 and 7 ssc paper 
they are having this process of how to uh, take oil so in early days when we want to teach the student about how in early days oil has been extracted and general people common people they use so nowadays the students they all belong to a modernized society they don't know how what is the use of cow also if you tell them to say and write an essay about cow they'll hardly line 10 lines and that's over for them so it's our uh, concept it's our team effort to show like in a class in early days how to extract oil so this is we have tried to prepare and this is a toy and what type of toy it represent it will be set by my comet good afternoon all here as we are going to attend at the webinar design thinking for class 6 to 8 so our team have tried to do that work on for 6 to 8 but uh, we can utilize this model for lower sections also like toy we have learned here type of toys that the cognitive toys first so here we as a children we got this activity from the the mentor side that uh, we have thinking in our mind and develop our uh, skills, then we create a toy for students. Then second is the social thinking. As ma'am told that here we have made that the cow also. So a student can learn how, what is the use of the cow at our home? Be because technology developed, but again in India, most of the villages, we found that due to connectivity, we are not having the technology. Or these days also they are using this in at their home. And third is the social. So sensory or that uh, third is the sensory toys. That by seeing this uh, with our sensory, we can you uh, mean uh, think that if it's kind of use we are doing this model. So these toys we can use it, uh, in our teaching also. So we have tried that four of the toys we will utilize it this model. Now uh, the, what is the benefit of this? that my colleague is telling. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Now this is a model which is basically made to churn oil from oil seeds, right? And if you see, like in the villages, people are facing a lot of difficulties because of uh, this power cut and all. And similarly, if you see the unemployment problem is much. So here, uh, what will happen? First thing, by using the windmill, we are using the renewable sources of energy so that will help us to avoid the pollution. Second part, if you see, people will get engaged because of this work. So their unemployment part can be taken care of. Third thing, if you see, like people will get the best quality things based as they are uh, means churning the oil from their oil seeds. So you can take a, means give a guarantee of the health because they are giving and getting the 100% pure oil as they are doing by themselves. Similarly, if you see, like this project also helps to avoid the pollution, which is which has a like social impact, health impact. Similarly, unemployment issues can be taken care of. Another concept we have added over here, that is we have integrated the maths in this also. We have shown the rectangular field. You can see it. Similarly, the movement of the cow or the bullock, it is in a circular motion. So we have tried to show some of the steps. So if you see, we have integrated with social science, science, because it also, it is one of the agricultural practices we are showing. So we, we are means, uh, integrating this model with science, mathematics, social science, and all the aspects. Thank you all. So, go to group six. Hmm. So, the seventh group should assist group six.
good evening everyone we are of group 6 uh, so the objective of our model is how to fear the uh, uh, how to eradicate how to eliminate the fear of physics uh, regarding the students because we know that the physics is the hardest subject uh to all of the children but how they are dealing it uh, with their daily, daily life day to day life but they don't it that they are using the physics so we are now dealing it that how can we eradicate the fear of physics using the simple or the we can say the simplest method how to can eradicate them using the demonstration method so for that i am going to uh, give you uh, in a situation in which a child has facing some of the problem regarding uh, his day to day life and how it eradicate uh, eliminated by the teacher by uh, by understood the concept of physics into the real world problem so for this i am going to uh, take it to my friend good evening everyone okay i am showing one story here is a boy and he is facing one problem and how he can how he can solve this problem by using the concept of physics he is a boy and he want to uh, break broke out the ripe mango okay uh, then he uses the one equipment of physics that is catapult catapult by using of catapult we can solve the boy can solve this problem now my friend will uh, explain how it works uh good evening all so first step was the brainstorming so we did that then uh, we decided that as most of us uh, were the are uh, physics uh, people so we took the problem from physics how to explain the laws and principle in class 9 the mechanics the uh, children coming from 8 to class 9 they find it very difficult to understand very simple problem so we created something which is, which everyone knows and we gave the name new catapult on because this catapult will solve the difficulty in understanding the newton's laws of motion so the name is new catapult on so uh, this is the mind map we start from physics dynamic mechanics and kinematics so in class 9 we have mainly the mechanics in mechanics we have laws of motion first second and third then we have motion in a plane so we'll show the projectile motion so all these and along with that we can show the elasticity elastic so uh, my friends will show how our toy work to explain all these concepts good evening everyone madam was uh, telling about class 9 but uh, i think uh, all the physics teacher also face the problem in class 11 also to teach newton's laws of motion any of my uh, colleagues please newton's first law of motion please anyone first law please anyone any physics teacher uh, as for newton's first law of motion an object tend to be at rest or in motion unless and until an external force is applied on it sir here is the problem of all the students in class 11 also i am applying external force is it moving i am applying external force see everybody here is the concept am i applying external force or not is it is it moving no here is the problem but not external force external unbalanced force so the first law a body is at rest see rest remains at rest a body is in uniform motion remains in uniform motion until and unless an external unbalanced force is acting on it see it's gone so the word keyword on balance will come to the mind of the child while writing the answer not just external force now come to the next part it is first law second law to broke out the mango i think all of you know that linear force is proportional to acceleration 
So if I give less force, it will give less, it will go less distance. If I give more force, then it will go, see where it is. So this is force is directly proportional to acceleration. To broke the mango, so we have to give more force. We can calculate. Okay, madam. Okay, another instrument uh, we have made uh, by the very small instrument, a musical instrument we can say, and this belongs to the chapter sound, which actually very difficult for standard nine, also for standard 11, that uh, how the sound is produced. Okay, so this is the working model of the pellet drum. Okay, so you can see the drum is uh, contact uh, the, the when the drum con uh, uh, comes in the contact of the button, the surface of the drum vibrates and the air molecules which are around the surface, they also vibrate and they produce the sound. That's why the production of sound is there. And this is the working model, I think. <laughs> I'll not explain just just I'm telling so take one minute. How many Concept we can explain by this only a simple model, simple toy. The first Newton's laws of motion, three laws. The second conservation of energy, third projectile motion and elasticity. All the concepts you can explain by this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Group eight, please. Sorry. Our toy here is shifting dimension. Normally in classroom, how, how we study about 3D shapes or 2D shapes, we go in a reverse order. Suppose we want to study a 2D shape, what we do? Like uh, we, we introduce them 3D, we, they do learn about circles, square and uh, rectangles, triangles and everything. Then we introduce them 3D shape, but just by showing a 3D shape that this is a cylinder. And then we tell them if we cut a solid cylinder, we will get a circle. If we cut a hollow cylinder, we will get, uh, if we cut a solid cylinder, we will get a whole circle. We, if we cut a hollow cylinder, we can get an idea about the perimeter of the uh, circumference of the circle. So we are shifting. We have, how in the classroom also the whatever teaching aid we have, we have three D to two D. Now our concept, our toy here is going to build from two D to three D. So we are going in a logical order where we build from uh, a two D shape from a one D shape from a one dimensional shape and from a three D three dimensional shape from a two dimensional shape. For example, here we have a triangle. So the child would have already learned about this two-dimensional shape. Now, if we want